your little brother is there to save the day. Hey everyone, just getting everything set up here. I hope everybody's having a lovely Monday. I know I am. Tired as I'll get out. I actually need to get me a real soda. I'm just going to stick with my uh, doctor, Diet Dr. Peppers because that god-awful whatever nasty coffee cola. What the heck? Ah, uh, France. Oh my gosh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think of what time it is because my husband's been to France. And I think you guys are about eight or nine hours ahead of us. Is that true? It's like, what, like, Two o'clock in the morning? One o'clock? <laughs> We're all on pins and needles here. Don't keep us hanging. We're making a book. It's 11 p.m. here. And, oh, you're in England. Okay. I can't even think of what time it was. My husband was a traveling man. He's been to Newcastle, Switzerland, Vienna, uh, France, Paris, I mean, all over, Bulgaria. You know, us Americans, we, the only people who use military time are the military. <laughs> so hang on, let me think. Okay, if it's 2,300 hours, that means it's about to start over. So it's what, 11 p.m.? Is it 11 p.m. also there? 11.30? Absolutely. All right. Get started. I got everything, I think, together. That that freaking coffee cola bullcrap really screwed me up. I spit it back in the can, and then I took it downstairs, and I said, smell. I told my husband to smell it. He tried it. And I went to say, uh, I spit in it, so don't drink it. But he didn't get, he took a sip. And he was like, oh, God, no, and ran to the kitchen to go spit it out. So I didn't even bother calling him. I was like, eh, I don't think it matters now. So. <laughs> He'll learn one of these days not to eat after people. Yeah. <sighs> I felt like I was going to drop that. All right. Okay, so I'm looking if I'm looking down here, I got a tablet here so that way cuz my phone's up here and I'm short. It's like a foot above my head. So, I'm going to be reading the comments down here cuz I can see it and it's right in front of my face because if it's not in front of my face, I'll forget you're even here and I'll just ignore you and I won't say anything. Um, because I kind of get in the zone. So, 
this is I'm following the same tutorial that's on my YouTube channel four girls stole my heart I'm gonna do this book a teensy bit that I'm doing that actual structure of the book the same okay but I'm using um, these new papers these new digitals that I made from my Etsy store um, it's not just gonna since it's calligraphy it's got a lot of different paper in here the paper pads called stamperia calligraphy and if this is your first time joining me on live um that's okay everybody always asks what the the magical pink box is i think i'm just gonna start making stuff up because i think it would be fun but it's a bluetooth speaker alarm clock uh it does little pixelated stuff uh like this and the best feature of all is the sound of the keys see so you know that's I like it because of that but I'm using it I use it for a clock while I'm doing lives and stuff and it's heavy because it's got a big like subwoofer thing in there but I use it for a clock while I'm doing lives so I'm not having to check on my wrist all the time um the calligraphy paper so I wanted to do the extra pages in here because the calligraphy paper which I love by the way it's very elegant and kind of masculine you know so this paper could be used for a boy <laughs> or or like if if you have somebody you want to make a book for that may not be into the frilly flowers and stuff like that, you know, this is a good option. But this was my inspiration here. As you can see, oh, dotted lines. I got to do, I got to remember that one. Okay, I'll get up on that. I also have music staff paper. Those of you who don't know, I am a musician also. It's been just a minute since I have played because I'm so busy, but I do know how to read music and all that stuff. I play, I've played for, since I was 12 years old. So, like, a long time now. And, um, but I do have music staff paper and stuff like that. And I'm also going to be doing lines that have decorative edges and stuff like that on there. So, this is the calligraphy paper we are using tonight. Um, it's all about handwriting and writing, so I'm making a semi-writing journal, but it's also going to have grid paper and dot grid paper to match the paper packs, uh, this paper pack. And uh, when I am making my books, uh, I use two paper pads for a reason, because my books take 8.5 by 11 sheets, and there's only 10 sheets in the Stamperia packs. And this is available in my Etsy store also. The links are in my bio. Um, make sure you like and share and do all that whatever stuff with the live. I would appreciate it. That kind of keeps you in the algorithm. Um, but this is available in my Etsy shop. Um, and the links are in my bio. And so this is one reason why I made grid paper. Um, digitals and my husband's working on this for me uh, and yeah so this is this was my inspiration that is a big freaking pen right here it's like a Harry Potter wand uh, so this is what I'm going to be doing a book of and I use like I said two paper pads to do that so what we will have is we have 36 sheets of this brown craft paper and the, oh, that's good, music journal. You could actually do, like, staff paper. That's what, yeah, if you guys aren't musically inclined, staff paper is what they write music on. And I used to have to make staff paper at home when I was in high school because of being in marching band and concert band and all that stuff. So I figured out a long time ago how to make paper on the computer. Uh, this is craft paper. Um, if you see any of my little doodags or gidgy goos or whatever around here, like tools, um, I have made lists 
on Amazon to help everybody out and myself in case I have to go back and go buy stuff like this paper. And this is on there. I like this paper. I have my husband just ordered me some more last night and it's probably my 14th order of this paper because I use it a lot. So, oh, my husband plays a guitar too and he plays the banjo because he's a hillbilly. He's from Crossville, Tennessee. I'm not from Tennessee. I'm from Florida, so that's why I sound Yankee, and he sounds hillbilly, so yeah, he does play instruments too. My daughter plays the piano, and the violin, and um, the man, uh, man, I almost said the mandalorian, <laughs> the mandolin. Her and my husband, her and her dad are making a mandolin right now, actually, so yeah. <sighs> Oh, I bought my husband a ukulele, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before, and he loves it, but he, I tell him he looks like that big, fat Samoan guy, you know, the one who died, who sang Over the Rainbow, whenever he's playing it, and I was like, that's what you look like, is that big guy, because he's, he's a big guy, he's like 350 pounds, 6'7", you know, so he's not as big, but that's what he looks like when he's holding this tiny little ukulele. My goodness. So, I'm going to, and these digitals for this paper are available in my Etsy shop also. So, if you want to make this or anything else, there you go. The lines, so I have 12 of the line paper, 12 of the grid paper, and these are front and back. When you open them, you see it's all like that. And then I have 12 of the dotted grid paper here. Um, so 36 sheets here, and then we're gonna have nine of the Stamperia eight and a half by 11 sheets. So, oh, you're so welcome. I've had so many people want the line paper and it really made, one day I just sat down here at my desk and stared out the window and I came up with 12 different kinds of sheets of paper now. I'm just slowly but surely getting them out, you know, because I have to test them out and make sure they work okay because I'm kind of a anal that like that. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is all of my covers are made out of chipboard. Um, I, I have made books out of you know, crap around the house, like an actual junk journal. But if I'm, I do that for myself. If I'm making it for anyone else, I, I just prefer to you do to start it from scratch. That's just my thing. Um, and so I start out with uh, the chipboard here. And when I say we're making a journal from scratch, we're making it from scratch. Now, I'm not, like, you know, producing the tree or anything, but this is what we're doing. So, my journal covers are a pretty standard size. The only thing I may change is the spine. I have, well, I have the art journal here. This spine I made extra fat and wide because, one, I wanted to add more signatures in. Um, this is not a standard size journal that I usually do. What I usually do is... I will sit there and um, base the spine off of what kind of journal it actually is. Since this is going to be an art journal, I, in my mind of make-believe, I guess, whoever ends up getting it is going to be putting like sketches and stuff in there. So I'm like, if they put sketches and stuff like that in there, then I'm going to want to make it thick. So, that way it doesn't look like an alligator trying to eat a person. So, that's why I've made it like that. And plus, I wanted to do one with multiple signatures. So, this has a lot of pages in it. But, we're not making it this fat today. This is, I think, a three and a half um, inch wide spine. So, we are going to do a more standard one, which is a two and a half inch spine. Let me... Uh, let me do a pen so that way you guys can see. Um, 
what we got going on here. And I'm gonna get a ruler. So I have two pieces of chipboard here. And forgive me if I'm a little bit spastic, but I just got done working out and I'm still hyped up on C4 uh, pre-workout stuff. So, and I have ADD and it's the afternoon and I don't know if anybody else has ADD and it's on medication, but when you are off of your medication, you kind of get a little spastic. And so I do. So forgive me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so... I am going to measure, these are eight and a half by 11 sheets, and I like to measure it the best way to not waste any, because, you know, if you got to buy chipboard, you don't want to waste it. So, I'm going to measure six inches, and this way is eight and a half. So, my covers are going to be eight and a half by, sorry if my head gets in the way. I can't, I gotta see to measure. Eight and a half by six by two and a half. And again, these tutorials are also on my YouTube channel. And I always post the TikToks lives on there the next day. And I try to make a supply list of things that I used in there. It takes me a minute or two to do that because it takes a long time to process. Which is kind of a pain, but you know, that's how it goes. I'm also measuring from here to here. This is two and a half. This is going to be the spine. And when you do it this way, you can get two spines out of it. So you'll have an extra. And you can hang on to that for another book. So let me go ahead and measure that. All right, and then I'll go ahead and measure this while I'm at it. Just get it over with. So there's cover number one, and there's two spines there with an extra one. I have a box with these extra pieces so that way I can use them later for other books or whatever I'm going to use them for. And here is the other cover. And then I usually leave this one. And I use this for a different style of book that I do for that cover. So that way nothing gets wasted. Okay. you're gonna cut the chipboard here remember don't press down I'll try to cut it all the way through the first time it will never work there's the extra piece One spine. Hold on, I'm just I'm just reading the, the comment. 
Apparently, this is my first time ever using a ruler, even though I've been using a ruler my whole entire life. And no, my ruler does not start at the very end. It starts right here. So, yeah. So, I usually don't pay much attention to that because I've made about 40 of these books so far. Some people have seen on my TikTok, and some I don't show at all, actually. Now, this is the extra piece. I'm going to put that away. And here is the cover. Spine. Remember, 8.5 by 6. This is 8.5 by 2.5. Everybody, everybody good? Everybody good so far? Okay. So now, this is always the hardest part for me, is trying to choose a cover. However, I peeked ahead of time. And I really, I was going to use this because I have memories on it. But these are all little cutout things. So I kind of don't want to waste those. So I found... Where'd that one she go? Um, this one right here would be good because it has that. But then I found the one that says diary here. But I'm not crazy about this. This is kind of noisy for me. So I think I'm going to use the one that does say vintage pins. Or could do... I wish that this had a little bit of extra over here because, well, I could actually do it with this, but I would love for that to kind of be the cover. And this, uh, if I had to choose my signature journal, it would probably be the heart accordion journal because that's really what started I guess this whole thing um but this is like yeah I guess it's the main one um that I have done now this one isn't bad either the light cursive one where do you tell wait a minute hang on these are cards so I don't want to use that are you talking about this one hang on wait a minute you guys are confusing me now. Wait a minute. The, this. You may, <laughs> made up new cuss words. Well, I have to hear that because I make up words all the time. You're talking about the pen one? Flip one. Oh, flip one more. Hold on. Okay, this I would probably do for the back. Uh, oh, you're talking about this one. Okay, I like this one too. I was going to choose. This was my first choice. This is the one you're talking about? Or this pin one? Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. A, B. Let's do it that way. Okay. Give me it. Now I just forgot which one I said A or B. This one's A. This one. Oh, hold on. Y'all are all... Okay, A it is. This one. We're going with this one. The one that says vintage pins on it. I gotta remember that. Next time when you choose A or B, make sure you remember <laughs> which one A was. <laughs> now, let's see if I can get it out of here. The back looks cool, too. Um... Okay, so that's going to be the front cover, and I'm going to probably square it up in the middle there. Um, okay, the back cover, I could give a hoot about. I mean, I could do that for the back cover. That would probably work. Um, just so it has a little something extra, because I don't want to put the pins on the back, too. That will actually look good as a page in the... Uh, 
the thing. Let me set this right here real quick. Okay, so when I'm doing this, let me put these to the side here for right now. This usually is where I will sit here and just kind of line it up. I think I'm going to line it up square. Let me see what I'm... I do... Do not echo. Next. Um, I do not measure things because I'm just lazy. So, I just sit here and I do it like this. Now, this, I want to get the vintage pins in there. So, I got to do it like that. And... I like using uh, the ruler just to cut the paper. I don't use it on the chipboard because it is, um, you know, it just, it wiggles and stuff. And it's just easier for me to just do it slow and then I can cut it. And I cut it straighter when I'm not using the weirdo ruler. So, yeah. And I always save these little scraps because I use them to make inserts and ephemera and all that good stuff with it this one i'm probably not gonna go like crazy like i did like i'm doing with the art journal because it's like more of a diary writing journal and i'll put a few inserts with it but not much because i don't want to take away from what it looks like so there we go And this side is going to be a little tiny bit lower because of the, I want that to be there, but that's okay. Let me just even it up. I'm going to bend it just to make, sh Let me move it down just a teens more. Yeah, even in it up. Uh, I think that will work. Okay. That lets me know where it is. And I also like to use the two paper pads also because... That way, I don't feel like I'm limited to... I know it's double-sided, but I feel like I don't want to be limited if I like the other side. So that way I could show the other side. And I usually do that if it's inside the book. Um, as a page, or I do pocket pages, which is like my favorite thing. Do I hate this chipboard? <laughs> it always does this. Um, I usually use 55 point chipboard. However, I have not, I've only been able to find it like once. And it's kind of drove me crazy. I do not put liquid glue on the front because it will warp the chipboard and it will cause it to bubble and do all that goody good stuff you know and so I do use the the uh, glue to glue these down though so that way it will have extra uh, uh, stability that's what I I just reminded myself that I needed to get out my binding tape Okay, and I just cut these little pieces off at an angle. You think of it as kind of like wrapping a present, sort of. Um, you don't really need any kind of little fancy gadget to do this. You just kind of follow where the corners are. And you could fold it over ahead of time and then try to trim it. I used to do that when I was first starting out. Now I've kind of just done it so many times I just kind of know. Let me 
me see. I just checked my glue. I wanted to make sure my glue was good and full. Let me uh, poke something in there just to make sure nothing's caught. Nope, it's just being weird. There we go. We got a little clump in there. Sometimes it happens. I'll tell you, ever since I got these icing bottles, they more precision, I guess, with the glue. Uh, I don't have an example of it, so to speak. Making a... Just a standard writing journal for now, unless I decide to do something crazy with it, but I highly doubt it. Not with this one, anyway. I'm just using a different paper pad for this one, and it's called Calligraphy. I am always losing this thing, and I, I need to get another one, but I just can't bring myself to use a different one because I've been using this since, like, 2009, so, and it just works, and I like it. So, what I do is I just kind of, if there's any glue right here, it don't matter. It's going to be covered over. So, that's going to be the cover. Looks good. We're good. We're good to go on that. So I'm going to put that right there. Let's do the back cover and the spine. I use Crafters Pick Ultimate Glue for book binding. I use the Beacons 3-in-1 for paper stuff, if that makes any sense. Like uh, making the ephemera stuff and everything like that. I'll tell you what, though, doing these lives on Monday has helped me be a neater person and clean up because I don't want anybody seeing my mess. So I work on it on Monday afternoons after I'm done homeschooling my kids. And I'm like, I got to clean up my desk. I don't want anybody to see this. It's awful. That sucks. See, I hate it when I lose something that, like, was really, really good. But, oh, that's, like, that's, like, losing, like, a best friend. <laughs> All right. This is one reason why I don't like using 50 point chipboard is because it does stick to this. Let me use a different board runner. And the 55 point doesn't for some reason. I don't know why. Sometimes I'll do it like this and it won't. Kind of comes off. So if it does though, I will 
I have a roll of double-sided tape, and you can always use that. It doesn't have to be one of these. I just find that this is easier instead of trying to measure, cut, measure, cut, measure, cut, measure, cut. Goodness for grids. What do you mean I'm going crazy again? What did I do? What with the lines? Oh, can you hear her? No, you can't hear her. I even had the the thing over here playing just to cover up her noisiness. Yeah, I, t I told you it's like 6.30, 7 o'clock. I think she's got like baby sundowners or something. And she just goes crazy in the evening time. I have no idea why. And trust me, we don't load her up with sugar for that reason. She, I'll hear my husband down there arguing with her. And I was like, you do realize you're arguing with the two-year-old, right? But I do too. She, I have this blanket that I use in the living room and she's convinced it's her blanket and I said it ain't your blanket it's my blanket so I will yeah the witching hour I will argue with her and then she starts getting loud and I'll start yelling back at her the same way she's yelling at me I don't care <laughs> it makes me mad oh well that yeah I mean, apparently we missed it a lot. That's why we ended up having her after 10 years of the first three. After the first three. <laughs> I'll tell you, though, it's not it's not fun when you have three five, that are five and under. Because then they kind of gang up on you. But when you have only one that's that way it's a lot easier but the older ones are a bad influence on her they keep teaching her cardi b phrases like occur and stuff like that and i'm like quit teaching her that i don't want her walking around people think something's wrong with her Oh, yeah. Well, I used to homeschool all four of them, but I had one graduate early um, in December. So, and she's she's in college now. It's such a pain, though, because she doesn't drive because she's only 16. And we've been trying to teach her to drive, but she drives like an old person. No offense. But like like an old person who shouldn't be driving. <laughs> so she um, is very like, you know, not a good driver. And so she can't like, she has to take online classes, but she wants to go to classes. I'm like, look, learn how to drive and then you can drive yourself. Because I am not carting you around to school when I have to homeschool your sisters too. So, yeah. But, yes, I have one off of my payroll now, which is good. And I'll have another one off the payroll here in another year. So, that's that's awesome. <laughs> I, like, I like them off of the payroll. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button that makes my live do something I have no idea what so here's the front cover back cover
usually I can make one of these books and have it all bound and everything together in about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. But when I'm on live, I usually can't because I like to stop and make sure that I'm uh, getting everybody's questions in. I'm thinking I'm going to use this one for the spine. What you're, they, oh gosh, yeah, I'm, I, I was never really planning on homeschooling, and so it's not really my thing, because man, you've got to have a lot of patience for it, and I am not a very patient person, you know, I, I try my very best, but I'm just not a patient person. I'm kind of, <laughs> and, and I've gotten more patient over the years, but yeah, they kind of, that's one of those things that, oh, there's the cutter, that, man, you got to really have a calling to do it. I know a lot of people who are doing it now because of, you know, 2020 and all the stuff that went on there, but... Yeah, definitely is something that takes a calling. Oh, yeah, I hear her now. Yeah, she's being a little lunatic, isn't she? I might use... I might use this side because that might work. When is it? Yeah, I'm going to use this side. I like this side, but uh, it's a little bit. Let me see. But, yeah. Um... Well, I'm I'm pretty well educated, I guess. I didn't finish school. I actually wanted to go to school to be a forensic pathologist. And because um, I'm super, super good at math and science. I have like one of these identic memories when it comes to numbers. And so I've always been really well versed, I guess, in math and I love science, and I came here to Tennessee to, oh God, shit, that's it, she's gone now, she's, uh, Ruby's having full-blown panic attack, or doing whatever she is down there, but uh, I actually wanted to move to Tennessee uh, because my dad lives here, but also because I wanted to work at the body farm. If you don't know what the body farm is, you can Google it later. It's a really cool forensic place. And, uh, yeah, so I'm, like, uh, I've been obsessed with, like, forensics and pathology since I was, like, 12. So, yeah, and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my my hubby's probably like, what is wrong with you? Why are you being so crazy? Her sisters are like, Ruby's going nuts. I don't know what to do. She's definitely like one of those children that, uh, yes, it is, it is a real place. I actually, it was really bizarre. Because I was watching uh, this uh, show on Hulu called Secrets of the Morgue. And it's a really good show. I like it. And in one of the episodes, they were talking about the body farm in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I was like, what? Do what? So it caught my attention while I was working. 
and they did an experiment because uh, they needed to know when the time of death was for this chick or something. And, and she was found outdoors, so they needed to know what time she died based on the environment. So they left on the property of the body farm property, they left a, a donor one outside for three days to see what happened to it. And I was like, dude, can you imagine stumbling upon that? What if you got lost and you started walking around and then you saw that? I was like, that would be crazy. So they do these uh, forensic kind of experiment type stuff or, you know, to help with investigations. So, yeah. <laughs> I was, I've seen them on actual shows before. And, I, and it's very close to UT, um, University of Knoxville, so. But, yeah, the famous body farm. That's actually when I was in uh, school and college up here. Uh, we had an anatomy class, and we had to dissect a body, and that's where it came from, the body farm. When I do the spine, I leave these little flaps here because this is how we're going to attach the book together, which we're going to do right now. See, right? Yeah, that's a, that's awesome. I heard Body Farm, and I was like, I I must I want to go there. <laughs> I volunteer. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue this. And again, this is Crafter's Pick Ultimate Glue. Echo. Next. Sure, it's all even here. Seeing this is such a great job at squeezing out any of that excess glue. So that's how, I think that's good. Looks good. Good so far. Yep. I don't do that until after I put the spine on. Since I have a big bite crocodile, I just do it afterwards. Make sure we're all even. And then I gotta get my binding the tape if I don't forget. I don't know if any of you guys have this happen, but every time Shakira comes on, she just makes me want to shake my butt. Okay, let's see. They're looking pretty good. Snazzy. See, it's going to be a very masculine-looking book, which is okay. 
I, I actually sometimes prefer that. I'm getting my binding tape here up here. Sometimes it's nice to have a break from flowers and frills and, you know, all that good stuff. Just ignore the falling down stuff. I drop everything and then I go and pick it up later. Now I gotta find what I did with my binding tape. All right, let's see. Binding tape, binding tape. I believe that I had this somewhere. Let me go ahead and get these punches out while I'm thinking about it. I'm buried here. And you don't have to use uh, binding. Up oh, there it is. <laughs> I lost it for like uh, a couple days last time. There it is. You don't have to use binding tape, but I do it just as a little bit of extra make the book not fall apart sturdiness. It's eight and a half by six by two and a half. And I'm just cutting some binding tape just a shade less than eight and a half. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of this weather. I'm a Florida girl trying to make it here in 30, 40, 50 degree weather. And oh my gosh, my husband's like, you got to be used to it by now. You've been here long enough. And I'm like, nope, never. And this is like a book repair binding tape. So it's uber, uber strong, like not going anywhere. Cover done. All right. Ready to do eyelets, grommets, whatever you want to call them. Let me get small, my smaller ruler here. I hate using the big one. Okay. Now, I have a standard um, holes that I do, and since the uh, spine is two and a half, or, I'll do this in a pen so you guys can see it. Do I have the a length? <laughs> uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. It looks like by ding tape, but yes, it's, um, if you go in the link tree link under my profile picture, it will say journal supplies. When you go in there, it will be under book binding list. If that helps.
It's the spine is two and a half. I uh, used to do them two, but it would turn into one of those alligator mouths uh, real quick. So what I do is I'm going to mark half of an inch from each side. So at half and two inches on the top and bottom. And then... I, I, I've had a lot of people ask me why I don't use a template. It's because I just, it's easy to just measure this. And if the template you're using shifts, you don't want to find out the hard way that your uh, holes are not straight. That would kind of stink. And I also got, to, I forgot to mark the middle one. I forgot this is and this is gonna be a three signature binder <sighs> and I'm gonna mark it at one and a quarter also so there is the three signatures and then the holes there's I think 12 is it 12 holes yeah it's 12 holes and what we're gonna do here let me get this out of the way the way that I do my holes and there's a reason why I do it like this because I have my binder pokey book making thing and I put, which I'm going to have to probably redo, but um, if you could see, I don't know if you can see on here. I have it marked. There's a little purple marks right here. And I have these marked on here because it follows this measurement. So that way, when I'm going to punch the holes in where I'm going to hand sew them, I don't have to figure out where they have to go every single time. So, and they match up perfectly with this hole. So that's what I'm gonna do there. And uh, so I'm kind of like, I like to kind of keep these kind of measurements a little bit simple so I don't have to fiddle with that. So the first line is gonna be three quarters, then we got two and a half, then six, then seven and three quarters. Wait a minute. Seven and three. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I just had to, something did not sound right to me, and I was like, wait a second. But yeah, that's right. So, let's see. You got three quarters, two and a half, six, and six. Seven and three quarters. And then what I do is I just draw a line down like this. And if you are able to, I would highly, highly suggest getting uh, some kind of uh, eyelet setter, grommet setter that can reach like the big bite even though the big bite is not my favorite to use because it breaks and stuff. But that way, when you go to do this, I always put circles here because it's easier for me to line it up um, on the crocodile. And ignore the binding tape because it kind of goes in this way. But these will be good and straight. And this is why I do this after I uh, put the cover together because I don't want the uh, binding tape to cover over anything so I can't see it. So that's how it's going to look.
And then we're gonna punch the holes in. And you can put the um, grommets in before or after you put the liner in that's going to go over top of it. Either way, you still have to punch it twice, at least punch the paper out. So that way you can get them there. So there's set number one. I'm always scared I'm going to break this thing again. If even if it does, um, just contact. We are memory keepers, and they will replace it. They replace mine for free. And they gave me a set of eyelets, which was not grommets, and uh, which is kind of nice. But gosh, it took two forevers and a Sunday, though, to get it. I filed a, a claim with them in August of 2022. And I think I received it sometime in January. Because they were out of stock. And I think because they were fixing the problem with the hinge that so yepers all right so there's our holes and let me get this piece right here that's hanging so holes and I'm probably going to use, I think, bronze because that seems to match pretty well. You guys all still with me? Give me a thumbs up. Yay, likes, or whatever. The, the case for the Big Bite, you can get them on Amazon. You're talking about this case? Hold on. This? The Big Bite case? The only problem I have with um, the case is... I, I end up not using it that much because you have to take the feet off to put it in there. And these are a pain in the butt to get off. And you put it in here like um, the feet. Hold on. See, I can't even open this open thing. You have to put the feet like in here because it doesn't fit on there with that. So the only time I ever put it in the case is like if I have company coming over. And... Um, and that way, you know, it's not set out and somebody accidentally knocks it over or something. Because I'd be like, oh, what are you doing? You know, but yeah. But the case, I, if you got a good place like on a shelf or something to put it, I wouldn't even bother. Especially if you use it all the time. I do. You know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, and that's an eyelet. It's a little washer thing. All right. So I'm just going to punch them ahead of time. Like I said, you can do it after you put the liner on. It doesn't really matter. It's just, I can do it after the liner because I usually do it before. And I'll show you guys how that is. I like to use the scraps, you know, so I'm not wasting so much paper. So I'm going to put this as the middle liner. And again, I do them under eight and a half, just a hair under eight and a half. 
Let me move this out of the way so I don't knock all them out. I do it about eight and three eighths because I don't want it to go all the way to the edge of the top bottom of the book. And I will do it five inches. So this is going to be covering that part up right there. And wait a minute. Let me make sure. Oh, yeah, I did, I did, I did, I did. Yep, okay. And then for the page liners, that one, the page liners are really good. If you don't have stuff like this on the back of the front cover, you can use that, but I'm going to use these for other things. Or the back cover, if there's, I don't know where the back cover, oh, here's the back cover. We came apart. But there's stuff on here that we can use. So, that's all right. We'll just pick a different page. Um, that one I want to use. Now this one, this is why I always end up using two paper pads. Because I always have to uh, find the others. To use. I want to use something that's kind of simple because I like to use more decorative ones for the pages and for any kind of ephemera stuff I may make. Are, I'm going to make the the covers are six inches so I always make these um, five and a half There's one. I try not to cut up like the above words and stuff because that kind of bugs me I'm just going to take, you take like a score or your bone folder and you kind of want to do this right here. That way you can kind of fold it over. This helps when you are gluing it in so that way the book can do that. And I'm just going to put some down in the little crack there. Excess glue out of here.
this first. There we go. See, that's looking good. You just want to keep on moving it because you want to make sure you don't get any bubbles or wrinkle or do any weirdness like that. If you keep on working it around, uh, you won't have any and it will lay nice and flat. If you don't, it, you're going to have wrinkles. I'm just doing the same thing on this side. And using your uh, little bone folder thing to push it in the two pieces helps a lot. So that actually looks pretty good. I usually have to fiddle with it just a little bit, but it doesn't look bad actually at all. So there we go. Let me just double check. Push all this extra glue out. Okay. Now for this one, where'd that go? Up. Oh, I do use the clear glue. I don't know why I switch back and forth. I feel like if I use the Crafter's Pick Ultimate on this, it may bubble a little bit, but this kind of keeps it from doing that. Hang on, I gotta get my glue down. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone? Well, I'm waiting on my glue to get down. Let me. I'm on my daughter. <laughs> my ta our tablet here is my daughter's account. So, I take her tablet from her. That way I can see you guys' lovely comments. There we go. And this is Beacons 3-in-1. And these lovely icing bottles. They've been a dream come true. Because it doesn't gurgle or anything like that, which is wonderful. They come out, it comes out a little bit thinner, like in a thinner line. So you may have to spread it a little bit more, but I'm okay with that. It's better than it wasting. And I don't go all the way to the edge. I kind of do it right there, kind of in the middle of the spine and the cover. And it's kind of nice because you can just even it up with this liner. So you know you're good and square. I am doing fantastic if you're talking to me and if you're not I'm just gonna tell you anyway sides of the the middle liner is eight and three-eighths by five five inches I had to think about that for a minute but yeah eight and that eight and three-eighths is the height of the liners and then um, the cover one, cover liners are five and a half, and the spine one is five inches. All right. Let me 
just check. Oh, we're good. Yay. All right. That part's done. Now we'll put in the eyelets. I did it this way because I usually do it the other way. I put the eyelets in and then I do all that whatever. Um, but no matter what, you have to sit here and you have to cut out the holes again. So I just use the other side. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, if you do put the eyelets in first and then cover it over with the liner, um, you can do that. And then when you go to repunch the holes through the liner in the middle, you have to use the 1 8 setting because the eyelets, or at least the eyelets I use, are four millimeters and the 3 16 setting will not go through them with the eyelets in there so you have to use a smaller one and that way you don't have to like poke a hole in it manually because it won't look as nice and then the next thing up will be I'm not putting a ribbon on this I was gonna put one on here but I mean I still can and I could put something across it it doesn't matter I usually put it under the liner if I'm going to but I could show you if like let's say you decide hey I want to add a ribbon closure and you can still add one on here before you put the signatures in, just so you know. And we can do that also. I have no problem showing you guys different ways of doing stuff because I forget how to do stuff all the time. Um, if it does, it's usually because you don't have this on tight enough. Are you talking about these icing bottles? Is that what you're talking about? The glue gooping out or whatever? Um, I haven't had any problem with it gooping out. This one definitely does not come out, but I can't keep the beacons three and one upside down like this because if I do, it leaks out. So that's why I just keep it in there. Usually I sit here and I, this part right here is the part that has to be tightened up and you have to make sure that silver thing right there is in all the way. And when I'm working though, so I don't have to sit here like this and wait on it to get down, I usually put it sideways like this on my table. Yeah, mine are on really tight too. I pushed it down, put it on real tight. This one I have to keep upside down, but it won't leak out of there. It's too thick too, but this one's too thin. Um... And it does. I like had a huge, huge mess and it was on there pretty tight. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this glue is so expensive. Oh, my husband just bought it and I, I'm going to have to have him go get me some more. And he was like, how many books are you making? He thought I was just using it all. And I was like, mm, I had a little accident. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm going to, oh yeah, the bronze looks good in this one. Let me get my little washers here. Oh yeah, that works. I think also, um, it also depends on where you live. I heard that if you live in certain climates, it reacts differently. So I don't know. But I've seen people, you know, say, oh, well, it's because I live here. It's because I live there. And it doesn't matter, like, if it's inside or not. It just, I guess, reacts a little bit differently than it, I guess, supposed to. I don't know. All I know is I get a good buzz going whenever I am using it. 
because crafter's pick is not, it has no smell to it whatsoever. I'm just checking that eyelets to make sure. If you uh, use these, I will say that I've kind of mastered what settings each one has to go on. If you're using four millimeter grommets, you have to put the bottom setting on two and you leave the top setting on a, if it's, and they all say like three sixteenth, but I do the measurements, like if I'm getting them from Amazon, by millimeters. I know anything over five is way too big. Uh, so I always try to stick with four or five. Way I'm not having to fiddle with it. So I'm four. Hang on. What is it? Number two setting on the bottom. And you don't really have to change it all. And then if I'm using five, then there they are. They're all in there. And if I'm using five, then I will switch it, the bottom one, to number one setting. Which is, I guess, like what the standard setting is. I got runaway grommets. What? Well, it does. I, I swear they said it, it can affect the glue. Because think about if, like, you're having the glue delivered or it's being delivered to the store. It may affect it. You know, you never know how long it's in the truck. And Beacons is really finicky glue. I mean, if you leave the lid off of that thing, you might as well just chuck it because it's ruined. I see you. There you are. I got a grommet here hiding. Yeah, the humidity does nothing for my hair either. Because I have like naturally curly hair. And I didn't have a problem until I moved up to Tennessee. I was fine in Florida. But for some reason it just... The humidity just does not deal well with my hair. Let me make sure that one's in good. Yeah. No. Oh, I knocked the other one out. But, I don't know. I haven't had a problem with the crafter's pick one. And, I don't, I don't know why the beacons is so finicky. But, I like having the option of using both. Yeah, my daughter Lily, um, she's my little mini me that looks like almost identical to me. Man, she's got, I have pretty thick hair, but her hair is thicker than mine, which I didn't think was even possible. But it is, and it's like always a frizz ball. Alright, and then after this, I'll, sh I'll let you guys choose about putting a ribbon on. I have some brown and other colors that will match. And if we want to put a ribbon on, then put a ribbon on. Don't, then we don't have to. I'm okay with either. Oh, Lordy. Y'all hear her again? She was being all nice and quiet. I don't know what happened. All right. We're good. We got them all in. They look great. This one is a little funky, but that's okay. Won't see it much anyway. 
All right, let me move this thing out of the way. So, let me sh How did I know? Line up. Make it. Oh, I make it look so easy. Um, well, the holes were already punched in there, and so I just used the holes. But, like, when I punch before, like, I punched the holes through, it, um, I had, I draw a circle, like, when I measure it all out, I put a circle in where the lines intersect each other. So, when you do that, you don't have to sit there, when you go to punch it, with the uh, crocodile, all I do is I line up the circle with the little puncher right there. And it makes it a little bit easier. But whenever I put the, the grommets in, it's pretty easy. You just put the grommets in and then you just line it up. I usually push the top part in this little, you see that little doodag right there, that little silver thing? Push the top part up like that and then just line it up. Once you do it so many times, it's just like, you know, it, it's like second nature. All right, ribbons. Okay, let me, hold on, let me get. Okay, so I have two colors here that are brown. The rest of them don't really match. Um, and the embroidery thread is going to be, uh, probably like brown, like something like this, like brown, probably that. Um, so light brown. Oh uh, yeah. Here, I'll do this. So, oh yeah, light brown. I agree. I concur. Hobby Lobby has what? I love Hobby Lobby. That's where I get all my little boxes and stuff. Not that box that I had the ribbon in right here. These bad boys. My husband found these and they come in huge sizes. I have a big one that can hold 12 by 12 paper and it's real thick and they came from Dollar General. And this was four bucks. And it's a good thick box. And I like it. And I'll have to see what the big one is. But I have, I like, I ain't showing you my bed. But I have one, two, three, four, at least four that I could see on my bed right now. Because I got them yesterday. Um, I needed them. So <laughs> I told my husband, I need some more boxes. And so he went in there with my daughter and was, they, stockpiled boxes so yeah you can get it from um amazon right now has the crocodile for 39 dollars when they were out of stock for a while um they were like 60 bucks. So, so what you can do, let's say I decided at the last minute, uh, that's good. And you can also, pro, uh, Michael's has it. Holy crap. The, sorry, I had a squirrel moment. The moon is just like full and yellow. And it just like freaked me out because I thought a light was on and it was in the window. Um, also, if you get, like, a coupon for Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or Michael's, I think Hobby Lobby stopped their 50% off coupon, but you can get a, a coupon for that, when it's not on sale, use that on there also, and that really helps, too. So, if it's, like, 40 $50 or whatever at those places, you can get it for 50% off. And that's a good deal, you know. And I also recommend also getting a hand one. The hand one is fantastic for, I use it for my pages, 
tags. You don't have to whip out that big, huge thing either. And this one, you can get this for 20, 24 ish, like on Amazon. So there's lots of options. Always keep your option and try Facebook Marketplace because some people get them and, and your thrift stores. Some people get them and they don't know anything about it from a hill of beans. And I don't know why they got it in the first place, but they decided it was a good idea. And then they didn't even use it. I've, I've had lots of We Are Memory Keeper stuff that I've gotten from the thrift store that had never been used. And it's probably because they just didn't know or do anything with it. That happens a lot. Um, I'm going to put a strip of paper over the ribbon. So what we'll do... I wouldn't mind using this, but I don't think it's going to be long enough. Um, or there's enough of it. So, that way, if you decide, hey, I want to have a ribbon here, and I forgot to put one in, or anything like that, there you go. Oh, God, that was loud. Sorry. So, that way, you can... I'll show you how to put it in afterwards. Because I've done this before. I actually I think I did this in the art book right here. Let me see. I decided I wanted a ribbon in it afterwards. And all I did was I just put a strip and covered over the ribbon. And it kind of looks like it blends in with it. So that's a good way to... Oh, you can't see it on this. Well, you sort of can. Um, I have a little uh, pocket thing. So here... You can just put a strip of the paper over it, and that will help secure the ribbon also. So that's what you can do. What, uh, the one, this, this one, it's called Calligraphy. I have it in my Etsy store right now. I always try to, if I'm going to do a journal or something like this. I always try to make sure I do it with one that I have available because I've had people get mad at me for it, um, for not having it. They're like, why would you do that and tempt that? Ah! You know, and I'm like, sorry. Um, so I always make sure I needed this open anyway because I had to uh, get the papers out. So that way, if, because there's a lot of papers that I do carry that you probably will not see on Amazon. Or if you do, they are expensive. And I don't know why, but they just are. Okay, so I'm going to just cut a, I'm going to cut this ABC strip over there because we're dealing with the ABC letters and I'm going to do it probably like that right under the letters I'll do one for the middle and then do one for that Let me just line it up a little bit better. And then we are going to put the signatures in. For some reason, that's the part that everybody always wants to see. That's the easy part as far as I'm concerned. I like that part the best. I'm going to trim this. I'm just going to make it probably around the same size as the uh, liners, like the width, five and a half. Oh, that's perfect. Right smack in the middle. And... Five, 
was five inches in the middle. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. And these letters can come in handy for making other goodies for the book. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is right here is about the middle um, because of the two grommets here. Two sets of grommets. Let me make sure. I like to just make sure I have a little tiny bit of extra before I glue it just in case. And I just kind of stick with the middle first. just to hold it still. Probably the next kind of journal I'll, I'll do, if I do another one after these are finished is probably a steampunk themed one and I will do an eyelet closure for that you know the little circle things that have the grommets in it and you you know tie it around I've done journals with that type of closure before and they're really easy to do it's, it's like ridiculously easy when I learned how to do it, I was like, are you kidding me? I thought it was way more complicated than that. I'm sitting here trying to find them on Amazon because <laughs> I was like, how do you make them? Um... But they're super easy. The other books are going good. I am embellishing the art journal right now. I actually have a uh, separate kind of project. Hang on, I got this little stringy thing caught in here. I have a, another little book. Um, it's the Rose Perfume book that I'm doing for my YouTube channel. So I have multiple books going at once, but they're going pretty good. No complaints. I don't know how I'm keeping them straight, though. I'm going to start getting confused. I have like uh, some, I had a, another idea for the art journal. Um, well, a few of them. So I had to start writing them down or I would forget. Oh, let me put the middle one on first. I'm going to pull this up real quick. I wanted to do the middle one first. Middle, middle, middle. I'm going to overlap it a little bit. So I can make that in there. Let's fold you over that way. Kind of uh, the white glue is uh, Crafters Pick Ultimate, and the clear glue is Beacons Three in One. Just folding this over a little bit. Get all this extra glue out. 
And it's going to be a little bit poofy because of the fabric, so that's okay. It doesn't have to be completely flat. I always get glue residue on my fingers and it drives me crazy. Okay. Let me make sure we're flat here. Now we can put this one in. Sorry, I get so distracted. If I'm if I'm working in here by myself, I'm like like a, an assembly line. I can just go. <laughs> Unless Ruby comes in here. And if she comes in here, it's just all chaos. All the time. Chaos. She likes playing in my journal scoops bucket. And I always have to try to... I made her her own bucket, so that way she would not get into that one. I gotta find what to do with my paper towels. Yeah, all my videos are on YouTube, which is good because a lot of people always complain that my videos are too fast. And I'm like, if you go on YouTube, you know you can slow them down, right? And um, and I usually have the videos to like um, tutorials and stuff that I've already done on there. So that makes it a little bit easier. I think this journal is like a fancy version of like Sesame Street learning the alphabet. Because that's all it has on everything. Oh my gosh. I just, this song is on uh, this booty work song or whatever. And it just reminded me of Magic Mike. And they're making another Magic Mike movie. And I'm like, dude, you're like older than I am. I think it's time to retire Magic Mike. Or at least get some younger people in there. There we go. We're looking good. We're looking good. Let me smooth this one out real quick. This is always the fun part. I'm always, I always want to be like very delicate uh, with my books. But I'm telling you right now, my books are made tough. Because let me tell you what happened the other day. It's Crafter's Pick Ultimate is the glue. Uh, the green book that I just showed the other day, the one that I'm making for my YouTube can channel got thrown across the room because I swung my chair around and it got knocked off of the shelf that was behind me because my chair hit it and it fell on the floor and nothing happened to it. And I was like, oh. And my husband looked at me all wide-eyed like, oh my gosh. He was like, you just finished like making that book too. And I was like, no, it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. It didn't even get dinged up. That's why I never put um, Mod Podge or anything on my covers because they don't need it. I I don't like to do unnecessary work. I like to... Oh, wait a minute. That's not... I'm looking for my metal book corners. I don't... I like to keep it simple. You got to keep things simple. Don't overcomplicate things. When you do that and then something doesn't work out... 
it can be very just you know disheartening especially if you put in all that work and then something gets messed up you know well you know at least get the book made first and that way you can uh you know figure it out afterwards So, I'm just putting these metal book corners on. I finally found the right size ones. I kept having these tiny, itty-bitty ones that I was like, no, you're not going to work. And I know some people put glue on the corner. Um, I don't. They stay on just fine. Just have to they test them, and if they come off, just squeeze them a little bit tighter. That's not a big deal. But uh, the tiny ones, I would encourage putting glue on. They don't like to stay on. Especially the... Well, I don't know what I did with the box. Uh, the little tiny fancy ones um, that have like little lattice stuff on them. Those do not like to stay on. So that's why I went and I got these big ones instead. Because... It, uh, they work better. I wish they just had better designs with them. I can't really find any without just that plain Jane design on there. So, yeah. Did I tell you what the white glue is called? It's called Crafter's Pick Ultimate. I'm looking at the comments, so... I wasn't sure if I told you. I have uh, the bottle somewhere. Okay, after this, I think I have to do a quick little list in my head, but it's time for doing the signatures. And again, these are all on my YouTube channel already. Um, how to bind the book. Um, there's a few different videos. There's one from a TikTok live um, of the book. Like making the book from scratch to finish. And then there's the books, how to make a book, book series on there um, and that's where I will break it I broke up the videos like doing the cover doing the page liner doing these then doing the binding and yada yada you know that kind of stuff so this is why I do my books this way because they can lay flat um, and I will put I'm gonna put this kind of lace stuff on here I like to put lace on the corners like this, and that is also the little protection for this part, too. Um, you don't have to, but I just think it looks a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure if I want to put the brown, because I always do, like, off-white hair cream and stuff, so I may do, I don't know, we'll see here in a minute. Um, so I'm going to put this to the side. The only thing that's annoying is these things get in the way whenever you're binding the book. So let me move these out of the way. And, oh, we got to get our pages. The pink monitor is a Bluetooth speaker. Okay, so 36 regular pages. And I'm going to have nine Stamperia pages as well so let me move these and they are eight and a half by eleven and the brown's really gonna go nicely with this cover so here when I do these pages let me get all the little uh cut out pages these little cut out pages I'm gonna save and then they will be used for embellishments so I just cut these 12 by 12 pages down to 
eight and a half by 11 and I do nine of them. I'm gonna do it this way. And these little scraps and stuff are gonna be used as embellishments later. So there's one. So let me cut these real quick. I didn't cut these earlier today because I wanted the paper pads to stay together so you guys could actually see them. See what they look like. Like these ephemera pages. And these are four cards right here, which is great because they I use those as little card inserts. I didn't think about pinning them. Uh, I wouldn't safety pin them because they, I have like push pins uh, because they will, it's chiffon ribbon and it's like diva, what I call diva ribbon. And yeah, it will uh, put holes and whatnot in it. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. It would be fine. Alright, number two. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, little, I call them push pins. Sewing pins. I'm only going to take a little bit of this off on each side so that way we have an even amount. I'll use this top piece. This top piece will make a really nice little border for stuff. Alright, I got one, two, three. We need six more. And I always use usually the other side. If you have a side that's like you know, the liner or something like that, or it doesn't have a nice looking side, or it looks awkward when you uh, cut it, you can use that for your pocket page. So it will be six regular pages. Let me get this out of here. And then in the middle where I sew them in, that's where your pocket pages are going to be. Nice. I like making pocket pages in there because it's easier. So this one we used for the cover. So now we can use the other side, which I like the other side a lot. Right here for a page. We're all coming apart now. And I'll use this for a page. Yes, it is. And again, I carry all of these in my Etsy shop. All right, so how many pages do I have? One, two, three. So let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need one more and we'll probably use this one. Nine. Okay, and then all I gotta do is just fold these in half and then I'll show you how we divide them up. The piece go. into three signatures.
Let's see, did I get one of these? Yes. Okay, so like right here, I already have a diary page. So this, I'm going to flip over. We're going to use this side. And this will be like a little grid page. Make it even. more oh that's better all right last page we're getting there we're getting there trim a little bit more of this off. So. Boring parts over. Okay, so I'm going to bolt these. Again, 8.5 by 11. And we're going to make three of these. Pocket pages. This one's a maybe. This one might be a maybe too. And that one also. And when you're doing the signatures, there's going to be 12 sheets in 12 sheets of the brown paper and 
three of the Stamperia paper in there. Oh, this was my other pocket page. Up oh, the toddlers wound up again. She's being a crazy chick. And this is one reason why I did the dot gridded paper and the grid paper and the lines with on the brown sheets. So that way it would kind of go with the little motif we got going on here with the calligraphy paper. I also have calligraphy stamps. Um, that actually go with this paper also. And those are pretty neato. Their stamps, Stamperia stamps are amazing. They're some of the most detailed, easy to use stamps. Like, you know, clear stamps, acrylic stamps. Oh, what, the kids? Yeah, I know. Never. She likes to keep my husband... On his toes and it's really funny seeing her like you know get all frustrated because he's so big that <laughs> and she's so tiny and he's like I don't know what you want what you know and she just gets kind of all the time at him but she gets that from me because I'm the same way so these are going to be pocket pages. So I'm going to set them to the side. Print off letters or words on my computer. Does anyone know what program I can... Letters or I would think just uh, word. Alright. So I have these divided up. I have 12 of the dot grid paper. And again, these digitals uh, for these are available in my Etsy shop. I always have people ask me for the lines and all that good stuff. So I put them in there. And that way, all right. I could put the grid paper in that one. That would be funny. Um... So the way that I do this is the pocket page is going to be all the way in the middle. And then I do six pages. So two, three, four. And then I do another decorative page. Let me see what I got here. Can you do this one? And then I do the last six on top of that. And then the outside page will be another decorative page. And that will be one signature. And then we got the grid page. So two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. paper in it. And then one, two, 
three, four, five, and six. I always like to double count just to make sure. Alright, I already used the good stuff. Just put this one here. And then last but not least. And then we're going to poke the holes in and then sew them in, which is super easy. I'm four, five, and six. And see, it doesn't take that much time to actually make the book. To me, the longest time it takes is to embellish them. I can make, like, five of these books in, like, a day. If, like, I'm not, like, on a Saturday. So, it's the whole, you know, doing all the little extra goodies that, for me, anyway, that takes the longest. So, there we go. Three signatures. They will go in the book. Like this. And there. And then I have my little border thingamabobber here. Let me find the. I don't know why, but I'm sitting like all the way on the edge of my chair, and I just realized it wasn't comfortable. So <laughs> let me let me shift. And I'm going to get a pen. And since the middle pages, the middle pages are not going to be shown. Um, uh, I don't do custom orders anymore um, because I, I get too overwhelmed with custom requests. So I stopped doing custom orders last year. But you be on a lookout because I do have an actual little boy and uh, little girl journal planned for this year. I plan on doing a journal book out of every single Stamperia pad. And there's over a hundred. Which isn't too, it sounds crazy, but it's, it's actually not that bad. I made like I like a hundred and I think it was 167 books between May and December. So I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that. No problem. All right. Let me make sure this line will even show up. Oh yeah, well, good. But I draw a line in here because you're not gonna see any of this since this is the pocket page. Yeah, this is the pocket page for the first one. Yep. The whole this. Oh, well, okay. So, what I do is whatever the size is of my, you know, the holes on the spine where I'm going to put them in, uh, that is what I have marked here in purple. If you can actually see that. And I do that so I don't have to sit there. Because that's like my standard size. And I do that so I don't have to constantly remeasure that. But all it is is it's just a, a thing to punch the holes in for the spine. So, or for the signatures. So when you have a marked, whatever size you want. If you use this one or uh, a different size. I don't have to measure anything. I just do this and this, and then I take it out. And now I'll have my holes. I don't know if you guys could see that, but the holes are all completely lined up. That's why I use a standard size for my finding these uh, signatures. And then all I do is Make sure they're good and straight. 
yes. Yeah, every, I got, trust me, I have to have myself list because if I don't, I can't find the stuff myself because I have the worst, I, I don't pay attention to product names. I pay attention to what it is or what it does. I don't know if anybody else is like that. And if I don't have a list and I have to go and find it again, oh, that is a chore. So I made list on purpose so that way I, Mostly so for my reference, but I just refer people to that because it's a little bit easier on me because I'm like, I have no idea. And I just put that middle one that I punched first back on here and I just hold it good and tight. Let me find my... That's why my board looks like it got, like, chewed on. <laughs> because sometimes it will, uh, when you stack up the papers, they shift a little. They don't, the papers themselves don't shift. But it makes wherever you punch the holes at not be in the same spot on the board. So sometimes you got to shift it around. So that's all I do. And then I'll put this back in here just to make sure my holes are all lined up. And you can use this little poker thing too when you're putting, uh, when you're sewing in the signatures. If it feels like the they're not lined up, then you can use this on one side, use your needle on the other. And that will help kind of guide you where they are at. Because sometimes they do get shifty. So, and then as you can see, there's the holes. And we are good. We're lined up. We're good. So, next one. Um, it's four girls stole my heart, or you can just, uh, click on my link tree link and all of my links to everything is in there. So that way you could like YouTube and all that stuff. So really, the only time I ever use this thing is just really for the first page. And then after that, I just sit here and line them up like this. And then just use it to poke the rest of them. I kind of like to keep them at an angle because this is how they are going to actually be. Like when you're going to sew them in. You don't want them to lay flat because then they will not be right. I used to do this just poke them through together like this on like a self-healing board and that works too this is just a little bit more accurate and saves time I don't know if anybody can hear that music, but I love Justin Bieber. I'm a Justin Bieber fanatic. Well, at least his old stuff. I have no idea if he's done anything recent. But his his songs are catchy. What did they say back in the day? You have Bieber fever. <laughs> I could care less if he was like like ugly as sin. I would still like his music. Some of his music. Some of it just stupid. Alright. 
I'm just making sure the holes are all even. And then we're just going to hole punch, or hole punch. We're going to poke them holes through the last one. And I only do also, I know I've probably said this like a million times, but I do an even number of holes in the paper because there's a reason for that. Um, if you do an odd number, you, when you are hand sewing it, you won't be on the same side as the side you started with. So then you can't tie it. You have to do something weird and you don't want to have to do that. Um, so if you choose an even number of holes to put in your signatures, you'll always end up on the same side from when you started. When, what meant something completely different? Wait a minute, what did I just say? Now you got me thinking about what I just said. Oh, no, Bieber, not Bieber, Bieber, <laughs> Bieber fever, like Justin Bieber, <laughs> not, oh my gosh, not, not that, I know what that is, I think Mel Gibson taught everybody about that, <laughs> I'm just going to, let's just, um, yeah, I'm just going to finish poking these holes. Bieber. <laughs> yeah. Bieber fever. That's probably why they said that. I don't know. I'm not looking at the comments because I know if I do, I'll start laughing. You just missed the conversation. We're talking about Bieber. Justin Bieber. Not Beavers. Y'all are going to get me kicked off of live again. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, let's mind gutters. Y'all are, y'all are unhinged tonight. <laughs> Behave yourself. Luckily, my kids are not watching the live because I have her tablet. <laughs> All right. So, we are going to do... Let me look at the middle pages here. Okay, that one could be a sideways one. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Um, goodness gracious, I have no idea what that child is doing down there. Acting like a little lunatic again. So, oh, I'm going to make this one the middle one. Okay, so middle, and there we go. Okay, so here we go. Got the three signatures here. I thought there was page missing because I only saw the brown ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
my gosh, please tell me that you put that on there. Some comments have been removed to protect others. Oh, God. Okay, so we're going to sew the signatures in now. And I always start in the back. I start with the last one. I don't know why it makes it easier. And you will only see the embroidery thread on the outside of the book and not the inside. So when I do these, I leave a little tail and then I sew it twice. So if I was going to sew it once, I'd stop here and put a tail. But since I sew it more than once... I'm going to, y'all are going to make me have the giggles now. I'm going to do it twice here and then put a little tail on this end. Uh, let me find that other. I don't know if you guys can hear that banging noise, but that's Ruby downstairs. <sighs> Lord, I don't know what she's doing. Almost sounds like she's hammering the floor. And this is just embroidery floss or thread. I forget the the... Uh, UK people call it floss. Oh, Lord. This just, this like, uh, like just went south and not that kind of south. <laughs> Who knows? 70 may also be something else. It would not surprise me. Oh my gosh, I have a funny video too saved that I was gonna... I always save these videos here on TikTok so I can show my husband later when we're going to bed. And that way he, you know, can get a good chuckle. And I'll, I'm gonna send it to you, Connie, because it, it kind of fits with the conversation. So start right here and oh god there's nothing I can say that is going to make this sound any better we're taking our needle and we're going to poke it through the first hole and remember we're starting in the back like the back door Make sure you leave a little bit off of here. Now we're taking our needle and we're going through the second hole. Also known as the back door. Or... It's whatever you prefer. <laughs> all right, there we go. We're all finished. See, it, it only took a minute. Like some people I know. I could keep this up all night. Trust me. I have my mind is always in the gutter. It probably doesn't help either that I'm listening to Cardi B too here in the background. <laughs> And 
And then we go for round two. Which should take another minute. If you can find the hole. Which I seem to be having trouble doing right now. Maybe because I don't have the proper equipment. Yeah. Oh, Gert. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My daughter was teaching Ruby how to say that the other day. So now she walked around going, oh, Gert. <laughs> <laughs> now where's Hayden when you need him Hayden's usually really good about stuff like this and I'm tying it twice All right, so for these little pocket pages here. Okay, so there's signature number one. I'm gonna take the uh, glue here and I like to glue over this. We'll get it all lubed up with glue. And this is going to be a side pocket. Uh, no, I use, um, well, yeah, it's kind of like cardstock. It's a, um, craft paper with a K, and it comes in sheets. I have it saved in my journal supplies link because it's a certain kind that I like to use, and I think it's the best. And if you go in my journal supplies link, it'll take you to Amazon and go into paper, paper, and more paper list. And it's in there. And it's the brown craft paper you see in there. Uh-oh. Okay, now we got to be good because I hear children coming. Hold on. Hey. How are you? I'm just being good. Are you being good? It don't sound like it. Come here. Echo. scoop. Echo. Stop. I know. Do you want to say hi? Yeah. Okay, hang on one second. Well, hmm. let me hear. Hold on to mommy for a minute. Alright, look. Look right there. Hold on. Look, look on the tablet. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. It is. It's mommy's ring. That's just my ring. It's not your <laughs> ring. Oh my gosh. What's <sighs> this? It's mommy's stuff. You see all mommy's stuff? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, say bye. Bye. Wait. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
All right, here, you can play with that ring, though. All right, here, go on. Oh, you don't know where the journal scoop bucket is. That's because I have hidden it from you, little toddler thief. All right, hang on one second. Let me... Oh, this. That looks good. Is that good? Yeah. I know. He's... I'm the and, and it's hard to believe she's making all that racket downstairs, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> what is she doing? She just, uh -oh. wah, wah, wah. My husband said she was terrible. Thank you for putting it back. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no, you can't come up here. Mommy's working. Yeah, yeah. Go get KK. Go get, go find KK. Can you go find KK? Thank you. Tell her to put your jammies on. All right. Number two. Jeremy, my my uh, life went completely in, in a not adult way, <laughs> or in an adult way. I mean, <laughs> um, in an X-rated way. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna get banned again? <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna get banned again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm being good. Thank you. She, you hear her? She's a, oh. It's an animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, she, can you close the door, Jeremy? Yeah, on my way out. Okay. What are you doing? Answering an email? Yep, trying. What, to your, to your girlfriend? Yep. How'd you guess? Does she look better than me? Of course not. Well, that's something. Milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Her milkshake or mine? That's the only thing I can think of. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Getting this second signature sewn in here. See, we're almost done already. And then put the, the trim on. And the back label thing that I always put on there. On the book. Y'all behave. Now, somehow we got talking about Justin Bieber, but it came out not yeah, right. Fever. Yeah, I said Bieber fever, but they thought I said Bieber. <laughs> yeah, Bieber fever, okay. <laughs> and then it kind of like started a chain reaction. I mean, you know how I am. My mind's always in the gutter anyway, so. Mm -hmm. The calligraphy book. I think it's coming out pretty good. I like it. It looks like something uh, that my, my daughter likes to journal and stuff. My oldest one. And this would be like her aesthetic because she likes very vintagey looking I don't really know what she is like an emu or something uh, e emo, e emo. <laughs> <laughs> what don't is call it that from now on. an emu or an em emo? emo emo what's an emu a bird is it yeah well she's a bird too like an ostrich is it yeah. Oh, it kind of sounds like something like a gazelle or something. And there's that TV commercial that has something about an emu on it. What? I don't remember. I, I can hear the jingle made, but I have no idea what it's <laughs> Well, we'll just call her an, an emu from now on. Maybe it's car insurance. I don't know. Is it like, uh, uh, what's it called? I don't know. I'll look at it and tell you in a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Whoa. What was yeah, that? that what was that? My cell phone. That was your cell phone? Yeah. You didn't break it, did you? No. It kind of freaked me out for a second. Liberty Mutual Insurance, the Limu Emu. The Li what? Liberty Mutual Emu. Limu. Limu. Liberty Limu. Mutual Insurance. Okay. If you say so. I have no idea what he was talking about, but Malaysia. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, there you go. Liberty Mutual. Um, what time is it in Malaysia? I'm curious. This one's going to be an upper pocket, I think. Is that the one I'm doing here? Yeah. And I glue, I like to glue these in because I want them to not get worn out, move around, do all that stuff. And uh, just hold them in a little bit better. You're calling us from the future, or you're talking to us from the future. Time traveler. Can't commit to gluing. Uh, why? Why? Oh, you mean like gluing them in before, I guess, you are doing stuff? I usually sew them in first and then glue them, but I'm just kind of doing it now. But the reason why I do that is because I like to make pockets out of them. Everybody loves a good pocket. Pocket. Like a walket in my pocket. Oh, gosh. Got to get out of this little loop of weirdness. I'm going to clip these. All right, last signature is going in. So one, two, and not too bad. Started at six. And slowly but surely. And once you make these kind of, I always encourage people uh, to learn how to make one book and then make it multiple times. So that way you can make it quicker and easier. One, if you decide to sell your books, then you got a good book to start with to you know, make and sell and whatever else. But that way you can calculate your time better also that it takes to actually make the book and you can make more. Pra they always say practice makes perfect. So that's why. I always have, uh, like, people... Um, on these, uh, oh, it's already in there. Um, Facebook groups or whatever on Instagram, Facebook groups, wherever it is. And they like have never made a book or anything or are not crafty people or anything like that. And you don't really have to be a crafty person to do it, but it kind of helps because, or just have like some basic crafty stuff. Um, but they, they have like no, nothing, nothing. They have never done anything. They don't really have an imagination when it comes to stuff and they want to make a book. And I'm like, start small, you know, make a small book first. Don't make like a huge book because chances are you get frustrated and then 
you most people will quit a hobby like that if they can't do it like perfectly the first time. So if you can't, just because you can't do it perfectly the first time, I mean, you can't compare like if you're a beginner to somebody who like me who's been making them for a while and I've had to do it like this is like my 40th book I think that I've made like this and it it takes practice my first book did not look like this at all I've changed it so many times to where I you know fix problems and stuff like that so that's why oh that's why I always say once you find a good way you like to make a book then make it like that but make it multiple times and that way you can if you find something about it you don't like you can fix it and do it a different way <laughs> so that's how I always encourage people to do. Because if you don't, you'll get discouraged and you may quit. And you don't want to quit something that you could possibly, that you obviously enjoyed enough to start doing. I've always, that's, a, and, and that's the same with like any kind of like crafty hobby. I have dabbled into pretty much everything at least once to see if I would like it. I have embroidered something before I have sewn clothes before I don't like that um and I would never tell my grandmother who's a seamstress that I don't like that because I think she would smack me so yeah um I I've drawn I've painted I've done everything and when you find something that you do like stick with it because then that makes it not real so much a um it makes it a fun hobby to do i'm just looking at the spine real quick okay so let me glue this in and these pages will settle down and lay once they are used to being messed around with and closed with the ribbon Yeah, everyone has to start somewhere. I always encourage people, if you want to make a book, start start with a tiny book and then work your way up. And that's exactly what I did. I made little itty itty bitty books because for some reason they're just a little bit easier to make. And you can kind of get the gist of what's going on with the book. And then I made them a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. I made books now bigger than this one, but... Um, it just, I don't know, it's just easier to start that way. But I know people who just want to go in all, you know, I'm ready, I can do it now. I have no equipment and I have no paper and I have no experience, but I'm going to do it. And more power to them, I guess. What's fake bake? What's fake bake? That's it. That's what I've noticed about groups, especially like if you're in like those kind of groups, like crafting groups, is people are, I don't know what to do. I'm, I've tried this so many different ways. I've taken it apart. I'm about to throw it away. And everybody's like, no. What are you doing? You know, you stick with it. And then we give them tips on what they could possibly do or what they're doing, you know, could be doing wrong and stuff. And that seems to help. And I hope that people stick with it and everything. Oh, I got to put the, I'm going to put a little knocker brad in here. So... I gotta put that in first before I put the little strips in. Uh, let me just see. Yep, there we go. These are also in those list. I think they're called 
drawer pull knockers. Okay, so you see how the signatures still kind of shift around and stuff? What I'm going to do like this, I don't like them doing that. Because the more they shift around, the more that it's going to weaken the thread on the outside. And it would be more likely to uh, mess up. So what I do is after I put this thingy my bobber in, or as my grandmother would call it, a gidgy goo, I put little strips of paper as like little liners to go over, one, to cover this up because I don't want to see it, and two, it will hold the signatures in place so no shifting which is what I ultimately like. Okay, so we got the knocker thing on here. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't really measure these, I just kinda eyeball it, and I can eyeball it from about here, and it looks like it's about half of an inch. And so I take the strips of paper that I cut off, and I'll find one that I may use. I can use this one probably. And I'm gonna cut it down to the right size here. I'm gonna put this on here so it will hold these pages down. There we go. And same as before. go about a half maybe a little bit more maybe like about three quarters of an inch put that right there for a second so this is going to go in there and it's good because it will like kind of snap under the uh, signatures, and that's what you want. Oh, yeah, see, I've incorporated a lot of greeting card um, elements into journals. Um, my thing is doing pop-ups and stuff like that, and I love doing pop-ups. Uh, elements into journals so I like to cross over and I like to do mixed media journals the best because that's kind of where I get to put every kind of crafting thing that I like to do in one book so to speak I guess And my, my uh, oldest daughter, she's the one I usually bounce the most ideas off of because she kind of gets, me and her are both like the journaling people in the house. My other daughters have done journaling. I uh, Ella, she's my middle one, the sarcastic one. She uh, is working on a journal book. And I think it's really good, especially for teenagers and stuff, you know, how it's good for them to have an outlet for stuff like that. All right. So we're good. We ain't moving now. All right. That one looks like it'd be whoop, about the same. No. I, I love mixed media. I have put the weirdest stuff into my books and journal creations. I have put liquid latex. I have put um, some makeup, blood stuff. Oh yeah, I've done, I've done it all. Clay, resin, I mean all that stuff. 
embroidery. I mean, I think the Scott, that's what makes it great. It's because there's no right or wrong thing um, of how to, you know. As a, I mean, you can make a book and everything, and what you add to it, there's no right or wrong answer. I mean, I've seen people really, really come unglued because somebody was like, that's not a junk journal! And you're like, calm down there, you know. Oh, yes, I've used a dryer sheet. We had these one uh, dryer sheets. Well, uh, it's not really a dryer sheet. It's um, it's the stuff that they use to make the dryer sheet. So it wasn't smelly, you know. Um, those things always make me sneeze. Uh, it doesn't even matter what brand it is. But every time I'm like doing laundry or something, yeah. Um, I've seen dried fruit, like, you know, uh, like fake fruit that's dried, dried leaves. I mean, it's uh, everything. I saw somebody put baby teeth in something and I'm like, that's a bit twisted. So yeah, I don't think I have anything like that on hand, but maybe give it a few years and maybe Ruby will. So But yeah, I think it's it's just a, a form of crafting or art that um, really just just depends on the person. Okay, let me. We're good. We ain't shifting. We ain't shifting. This one's good. We're good. I don't put any on this side um, or on this side. So um, I'm a distributor for Stamperia. Um, they don't sell directly to customers. They sell to only to people who sell their products. So I have a in my Etsy shop, that's what I do is I sell their products for them. I'm just gonna squeeze. I can't ever get my fingers here on the very edge of the middle pages that I had put in there. This one's okay because this one's an upper one that's open. So I like to take like some pliers or tweezers or something and just squeeze them real quick. Just to make sure they're together because you don't want any glue seeping out of there. They won't. It usually won't by now. But just to make sure. So there's the signatures. And... Now I got to put, do some stuff here on the outside. And I've got lots of goody goods that can go. I mean, let me make sure these are even. Oh my God. Now I couldn't have done that better than myself. Look at this. My things are about even Steven. That's rare for me. I usually uh, keep them long and then I'll sit there and trim them down. So let me turn it this way and I'm going to do the thing. Ugh, I'm going to do the thing on the back that I do. It's like marking my territory on the back. And I put my logo thing on here. I can get a hold of this thing. There we go. And I had to rearrange which one. Oh, yep, it's this one. I can tell it's heavy. I had to rearrange my area here. I was running out of room with stuff. So, um, that looked like it was bent. Puncher here. These little punchers are fantastic. You can get them off of Amazon. And 
they're customizable. So if you want to put like handmade by, you know, Deborah or whatever on there, you can. And that's kind of like what I did is I got my store um, name put on there. And I'm going to use this ground espresso because I like ground espresso. It's kind of a darker brown. You can tell I've used it a lot. And refilled it and then used it and refilled it. Yes. my The art journal that I'm working on embellishing right now has five signatures in it. Um, I have a Sleeping Beauty book that has six signatures in it. Um, the most signatures I have ever put in a book is, uh, 24. So, yeah, I put in lots of signatures. Because I'm, I'm always experiment with stuff. Yeah. They're all constructed. The only thing is, is they have a bigger um, spine. Just so they can... Because if you have more pages or more signatures, they are going to... You'll end up with like one of those alligator looking books like this if they put just a few things in there. So you kind of want to make it to where they uh, will fit a lot of stuff and I'll show the art journal here in just a second while I'm waiting on this to dry and uh, that one is pretty thick because when I make them I don't think about I kind of think about what I would do with the book and with the art journal I think of somebody putting like little sketches in there and writing stuff down in there or whatever. Something along those lines. So I was like, it's probably going to need to be thick. If that makes any sense. That's just how my brain kind of works. So I like having this grid paper. Gosh, it makes it easier to cut stuff. Hang on one second. I'll look and see. Are they still up downstairs? Cackling like a bunch of hens. Well, that's just girls. Yeah. <laughs> what are signatures? Signatures are the groups of pages in a book. Yeah. You can make the books like exactly the same way. All you have to do is just make the spine bigger. The covers can be the same size. The pages can be the same size. Just make the, the spine fatter. And then you can fit more stuff in there. And that's usually what I do. I stick with, you know, the same size. And then I will just make the, the uh, spine wider I don't think um, I went and over complicated too much but yeah but to me this is like a good size and length this way so that's why I always kind of stick with it like that and I had somebody ask me before why I don't screw this in because I don't want to mess up the cover. It's this uh, Crafter's Pick Ultimate, just it holds metal at two. That's that's very random. Fake. 
Fake. Okay, I know what fake fake is. It's that, yeah. Like, the cakes that look real, but they're not. Um, okay, let me put this ribbon on real quick, because I like to put the ribbon on right here. And I'm going to do that. And I'm really, really teetering if I want to do that or the off-white. And I have a feeling that everybody's going to say the off-white because it looks better. A fake pig. <laughs> when you go to a tanning salon, it's called a fake bake. Well, I guess so. I've never heard that, but okay. Alright, let me find my other ribbon. Oh, no, that's flowers. I need to remember not to switch around my boxes without labeling them first. Uh, that looks like it would be a lot better. This is not the same. I don't know what that is. Nope, that's too pink. Okay. It's six and a half, or six and a half. It's eight and a half by six by two and a half. Uh, you don't have to print them off. That's one benefit. I don't use, um, digital, like, uh, papers, like, like this. Um, I always, I like the Stamperia paper because it's gorgeous. And their paper pads are just, I don't know, they just are more... They're unique. Some of them are very... They have, they have like, a hundred different paper pads to uh, decorate with and stuff. I just like the paper itself. Okay, I'm gonna... Actually, I need to open... Let me open this up. Is uh, Bugs in Bed, right? It's like heavy duty card, double sided card stock, but like super heavy duty, which is what this cover is made of. And besides uh, the chipboard, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys think the darker one looks better? You better tell me before I put it on here. Luckily, this is a standard side, so I can use this for a different one. No, it's not a hard decision. Because once you use Stamperia, you'll never ever want to use anything else ever again. I promise. Okay, I thought that. I thought the lighter one looked better, too. And this is just Beacons 3-in-1. Once I started using Stamperia paper, I have not wanted to use anything ever since. And they're always coming out with new um, pads, paper pads. And they have other products, too. They don't just do paper. They have ephemera packs, um, little stickers, you know, uh, die cuts stamps, uh, paint, ink, 
uh, all kinds of stuff. The acetate paper. So, yeah, they have all kinds of stuff. They have a uh, whole entire... Now, some stuff I cannot get because it's not allowed to be shipped freight from Hungary, where they're located. So, which kind of sucks, but... Eh, it is what it is. They do a lot of mixed media stuff. I don't buy the books. I make them. Some of it is a little bit pricey. I try not to make mine too overly priced. And my best comparison is going on Amazon and seeing what crazy prices they're charging. And so I make my prices a little bit better. Like they do have huge mega pads of paper that have 22 sheets in them, double sided. And if you go on Amazon, they're about $26 and up. And I sell them for $24 because that's like a really good deal. My The Imagine journal that I did, I'm not sure if it's still pinned up at the top. I don't remember. But I have playlist now at the top of my uh, profile. And if you go into my books, you can see all the books I have created with the Stamperia pads. I always put the finished, usually the finished ones in there. And I did one called the Imagine Journal. And that was with a 22 um, sheet mega pad by Stamperia which is nice because it takes two uh, two pads to um yeah molds they have molds too and it takes two pads to make one of these books because I use several sheets but I use the extra sheets to um embellish the stuff so that one has 22 and I only have to use one and that makes it nice Yeah, I have a link to all of my stuff. That link tree is like a blessing. Because then you don't have to have a million links like you would on uh, like Facebook and stuff. And link, just put the link, you like hit the link tree and then it goes to every single one. My website, my YouTube channel, my Etsy store, my other website on Zazzle. And just everything. Pinterest. I like Pinterest because I can put all the pictures and stuff of my stuff on there. That's kind of handy. So, yeah. I'm just putting ribbon on, by the way. I always do this to my spines because I like to... One, it protects them. And it looks like little good embellishment. Let me just cut this little straggly piece off. I'm going to glue it down. But when you do it, you always have to open it up just to make sure it's nice and flat. If you don't, it will bunch up and you don't want that. So somebody was complaining that I don't use, or asking me why I don't use fabric in my books. And I'm like, I don't like fabric, but I do this. I like it. This is my extent of fabric that I like to use. I plan on making some fabric books, but I have made fabric books with Stamperia because they do have fabric too, but only a few um, themes. They only have like four themes for that. I know I when when I saw the calligraphy pad I was like oh I love it okay so there is that all right so I'm gonna let this dry so while it's dry and I'll show you the book 
where it has multiple signatures. I'm working on this book right now. Hang on, let me put this back in the back here before it falls out. Crash lands somewhere. There we go. Okay, so this one, oh, it has, yeah, it has five signatures in here. So this is, I think, a three and a half inch spine. I made it about a month ago, so you have to bear with. Uh, e e yep, yeah, well, maybe. Now it's a, looks like it's maybe three and a quarter inch spine. Um, and I spaced it out this way on purpose, you know, so that way it could uh, fit multiple things in here. So this gives it room so that way if it they fill it up, they could fill it up like that much extra and of course tie it close. So if they start getting to like right here, you know, they could still tie it close, but that way they have extra room to embellish it, add stuff to it. And like I said, it's five signatures. And it's a really thick spine. So, and when you, when I'm working on it, here, let me whip this out of the way. When I'm working on it, see, it lays, it can lay flat and I'm knocking everything over at the same time. So, you have like the first signature here. So, everything lays pretty good. And you can still work in it. If you have those little clip things, which I have them somewhere. Uh, you know, like the little hand clips. Oh gosh, it's like buried down in there. In. You can, you know, clip it. I don't usually use these if I'm doing journal books. But see, you can keep it clipped. Let's say you're working here. Good night. Work. Good night. Yes, I do put them on Etsy when they're all finished. And I'll make an announcement. I usually make an announcement on TikTok because if if I don't, people kind of get a little bit peeved at me. So what I'll probably do is I have about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight or nine books right now that are made. They're just not all the way embellished. And so I'm probably, I'm hoping to be done with this one this week. And then I'm going to start another book next week, maybe. But if I could get a good run and work on them, then it will it'll be done fairly quickly. This one... Uh, will probably go up at the same time as the art one because I'm not going to do a lot to it because I don't think it needs too much since it's going to be more of a a journaling journal to like start to finish like completely 100% done embellished whatever um, if I were to work on it, probably like a week or two. This, I just made this book tonight. Completely from scratch. And I started at 6 o'clock. It usually takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to put like a book together to this point. But I usually stop here on live and answer questions. Do you want to see the books that I have made with them? Because I've just made a whole slew of books. Woo, my goodness, I'm knocking stuff down. Hang on, let me get them. Okay, so, hang on, let me find room here. Okay, so this one is the Sleeping Beauty book. Uh, let me tie this 
a calligraphy book up. Oh, let me do one more thing before I show you these other books. Let me find what I did with that stamp. Before I forget, because I will forget, the middle pages, I said were pocket pages. This is what I do with them. I put this little indent right here. Okay, let me just make sure. Just like that, so then you know it's a pocket page. And I also take my little die cut thing, or die cut, you know, this thing. <laughs> That's how you know and get tired. I'll put an eyelet here, just like the eyelets on the spine, and then you can hang little dangly doohickeys from there which I have some little embellishments that kind of go with this. And so that's one pocket. This one is an upper pocket page. Hang on one second and I'll... And... I always make a bookmark that goes in here. Uh, that's kind of like, I have like standard things that I always put in my books to make sure that they, you know, all kind of have the same thing. And then this one's a side one. And let me empty this. Who is that making that noise? Who is it? Who is that making that noise? What does it sound like? I don't know, kids. Somebody's in the shower. No, it sounds like a kid, like, making noise with their mouth. So, pocket pages here. And, like I said, this, uh, I glue them closed. So, that way, one, you can't see any of the embroidery thread in here. But it also helps keep it more secure. And this is the only place you see it. That way they don't come undone or anything like that. And, oh God, my don't look at my nails right now because they look terrible. <laughs> if, if you saw them up close, they're pretty from far away. Thank you. But, yeah. What am I doing here? Okay, so there's the one we did tonight. Okay, Sleep and Beauty. I think I did this one... Last Monday on live. Um, and I made it. I tried to do things a little bit different. Um, so with this one. I made it. To where it has a magnet closure. But it looks like this. And this is an actual. Pocket. This is the Sleeping Beauty paper. See. It has a pocket that goes right here. And it's like a window. And it opens up like that. And then here are the signatures. Um, and I tried to keep the, um, there's an upper pocket. Tried to keep the story thing in order as best as I could. Um, this one I did a little bit different than like the one I made tonight. This one has six signatures. Um, and it has a few extra pages. But it's still with three holes, but just six. Um, and see, this is the back cover. And I'm going to embellish all of this stuff in here before it goes up. And the front cover. I forgot. And the reason why I did a closure like this is because I forgot to put the ribbon in. And I was like, no, we must have the ribbon or something or some kind of closure. So that I ended up doing this on a whim on live. So, and see, they all fit nice and neat. This one is the one that I have made specifically for my YouTube channel. And I broke the tutorials down into little videos. And so this is the book I used to do that. And this I just finished putting 
together. And so it's I have to still put on the little embellishment stuff everywhere. This one is the Rose Perfume paper that just came out like in October last year. And it's uh, it's very pretty. It's like kind of a perfume French themed uh, paper. And this is the this is what I do with the eyelets right here so you can attach little dangles and stuff to them. And uh, and I've made one like this before, but it was for my grandmother for Christmas. And so I told everybody I was going to make another one. So this is the other one that I have made. And let's see. I'm trying to think of what other one we have going on here. Um, this one, and then there's the art journal. The one that's right here um, is one I'm not quite satisfied with the box it's in and I'm actually re I'm going to redo the box probably this week because I want to make it just a hair bigger so this is like my little prototype box and this is going to be the suitcase journal um here let me move these over um and it's going to have a handle up here and the straps are going to be different and what I and I, I like to theme all of my journals when I do these but this was like my first uh, like little prototype I guess of this actual journal because I wanted to uh, do something a little bit different so of course I made the box for it but I'm gonna redo it and make a different box and then this is just a, this is like the one I did tonight it's just a standard journal I have not done the middle things yet or anything like that I only made the actual journal and the box so this is what this is like a, a it's called voyages by Stamperia and that's why I'm making it into an actual suitcase so, they get delivered, it depends on how many you get, but I ship them out in 12 and a half by 12 and a half um, cardboard boxes. Yes, I may, I make the brown line paper and it's actually available as a digital in my Etsy shop along with the grid paper and the dotted grid paper. Yes, it's scrapbook pack. Here, um, I have one right here. It's like 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. This is how it looks. It's like an eighth, of, I don't know, like, and there's 10 sheets in it. And like if somebody orders one, it goes in like a vinyl shipping envelope. And... I thought you meant you wanted to see what the actual papers look like. Uh, some pads have 22 sheets. There's only three, though, that have 22 sheets, and that's the Mega Pad. And I actually have one of those right here. Like the Alice in Wonderland this is Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. Both sets. And it's 22 double-faced sheets. So you get two extra sheets in one of these mega pads. And 
at that. All of the prices for all of these are in my Etsy shop. Thinking she meant, oh. I do have some digitals in there also. Yes, I I know leather straps would be great. That's why I'm redoing the box. And I also have other stuff. The book I'm not redoing. I'm just doing the holder. Because I want to make it a little bit wider. Because um, I'm thinking future-wise what's going to go in there. Uh, you could, to make my books, I use two paper packs because I like to use different sheets because the, the packs, the pack of 10 comes with, uh, ephemera sheets in them, like envelopes or tags and stuff like that. Like on the calligraphy one, you have a sheet that looks like this this stuff you can cut out and then you have a sheet that looks like this and then there's another one that has like four cards on it so in every single pack like two to three sheets are these extra cut out sheets and they um but they do that so that way you can make like whatever out of them and like cards or anything and that way you can cut those out and then you can decorate your book with you can also take all the leftover scrap sheets and stuff like that and you can make um a smaller book you can make more inserts for like your journals and all kinds of stuff which is what i do with them Yeah, two packs of ten. Two packs get are more than enough to embellish a book. I'm using two packs right now to do these. And I have, let's see, one, two, three. I have four books over on my other desk. And I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And then the house one that I've done over here so and I've made these within the last couple weeks except for the art journal <laughs> if that answers your question I think I think I've answered it I'm not sure let me do this so that way I can Oh, this, oh, the, the crazy house one, this one that I did, like, on a whim, yeah, um, me and my spastic moment. I just like the new house one, so, uh, the Welcome Home collection so much, I wanted to make the house one, yeah. Yeah, I know. That was, I couldn't help myself. I don't usually do, I like to plan out what I do on live, but sometimes I just, I have to, I have to go with it. So I hope that, I hope that helps answer your questions. You guys see me tap, oh well, yeah, I'm tapping on the, I'm on my daughter's, um, profile like in my my live I know I like I like them all too I haven't really found one that I don't like yet um I like the steampunk ones though 
the best. Uh, I just finished, God, which one is it? Oh, here it is. I just finished putting this book right here together. All the paper packs, it depends on when they were released, but they're different prices. You'd have to just go uh, to my shop. This is the book I just put together. Yeah, in, in just a set. I'm showing these other books because they wanted to see them. And I'm not sure which I probably am going to either do the Sleeping Beauty book embellishments next, but I'll probably be embellishing a few books um, together because it just makes it it makes it easier once I get to you know whichever one I'm doing. Um, I'm not quite. Hang on, let me get the other ones. Uh, because I really want to get started on the recipe or the recipe journal also. But I also have these Cosmos ones. And then the box of roses. That was the other one that I did. I think on Saturday. It was on a Saturday live. Um, one of these Cosmos ones are not going to be like fully embellished. They're just going to have a few things with it. And then the other one will be like a fully embellished book. Um, now that I have all the books actually put together. But I'm going to keep on making actual books too. But this one will probably be the next book that I start embellishing after the art journal one is the box one um, because I have like so many inserts and stuff that I have planned for this one. That's the only bad thing about this chiffon ribbon is you get little scraggly pieces because it's not cut straight but this is the box book one that i'll probably be working on next it's like a kitchen themed recipe book so this is that will probably be the next one after the art journal one is finished but i started embellishing this one no i don't ship to canada i'm sorry i don't ship outside the united states because it's crazy expensive it would cost like almost as much as the book to ship them um it's called casa granada is the uh the recipe book it's got pomegranates on it oh wait a minute they're here on the back and I also just got in some of that acetate paper that has this on there also. So, they're books for, mostly for junk, they're called junk journals. And they, uh, people can write in them, decorate them, do whatever they want in them. I don't have any prices on these books yet. When they are ready to go up on my Etsy store, um, I'll probably know then. I'll have to make an announcement. Oh, you guys can see that. Can't you? <laughs> um, crafts in general, probably like my whole life, but actual journal books since May of last year. If 
that helped. But I'm always creating stuff. I like doing unique books also, like the house book and stuff like that. Um, I've done other books that are different and different shapes. That's just kind of my thing. Let me see if they're in here. Oh, yeah, they are. I've done one shaped like little tea bags. I've done... This, the original book that I came up with was years and years and years and years and years and years ago was the accordion heart shaped book. So I make different kinds of books. I have made wearable books. This one's pinned up in the top of my profile so you can see what the inside looks like. And then little square accordion books. Stuff like that. Um, at Christmas time, I made a hanging ornament book. It actually goes this way, but it can hang like this. So I made all kinds of books. I like making different, unique books. I don't fit the mold when it comes to making books, I guess is the way to say it. Thank you. The books I just showed you, can you buy on Etsy? Yes, I come up with my own. I don't know. I just, uh, like, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, I see in my head how I want something to look like. Probably the same way if somebody's drawing a picture or something. And then I just try to recreate what I see. Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't like, okay, here's a, here's a good example. I was planning on making this book on, on a, a live on Saturday. So what I did was I was, it was like one o'clock in the morning. I was in the bathroom and I said, I really want to make like, um, I want to, I don't want to just do like a same kind of book and it's really pretty and I was like oh what about a box of roses so this is going on in my head okay and I said oh what about doing a window where it looks like you know like the top of a box that you would see in a store and it would have like some kind of roses picture in it so I ended up going on live and I had never made this kind of thing before, like, you know, where it's cut out like that. And so I ended up doing this on live, just kind of willy-nilly, I guess. So, yeah. This is, so I made, this is called the Box of Roses book. So I made a window to go in there. So, I mean, it just, sometimes it works out and sometimes I, you know, it's a disaster. A knock on wood. Let's hope that I can still keep coming up with ideas. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Well, it was like, okay, we were like, I think five hours into it. And I was eating pizza. I remember, oh, God, pizza sounds so good right now. Squirrel. I know. There's my, did you hear my husband? I always have squirrel moments. But I was eating pizza, and then I was eating all kinds of other stuff because it's Saturday, and I didn't give a flip. And so, yeah, it was kind of spastic. So after, like, five hours of being on live, I get kind of loopy. You know, I can't help it. I just, like, I can't focus anymore. I have really bad ADD. And, yeah. And then I start getting hungry. Hey, but I would just like to mention that not once after drinking like two Dr. Peppers either did I get up and go to the bathroom either. That's not a positive. That is a positive. I have a bladder of a champion for having four kids. I don't I don't pee on myself when I sneeze or cough. So I think that's that's always the a plus. My standard books have 36 of the brown pages 
and nine pages of the decorative like Stamperia pages. And then they are eight and a half by 11. That's like the standard. Sometimes I, if I do more than three signatures, like the Sleep and Beauty one has six, so they'll have a different number. Uh, the art journal one I'm working on has a it has five signatures, so that obviously has a different number. But the standard ones like this, they're 36 brown pages, nine Stamperia pages, and three pages of that of the nine are pocket pages. If that makes sense. So, I hope I'm answering you guys' questions. But yeah, so I have enough to keep me busy for a while. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is, I'm hoping when I finish, like, it will take me like a week or two to embellish books. And what I may do is, when I, if I'm embellishing one... I'll probably have one that's not going to be embellished, and both of those will go in the Etsy shop at the same time. So that's kind of like how I work. Because I love to make the thingies for them, the inserts and stuff like that. And I've started having to write stuff down about inserts, because I'm thinking about inserts for this one, this one. I thought about inserts for the one I just made tonight already, like before I even made it. And then the recipe one and the, you know, so I have to start writing them down or I'm just going to get. Um, I do lives usually every Monday um, between 6 and 6.30. I try not to do them any other days because I don't like to step on anybody else's toes. Like, you know, who are I, I'm friends with because, you know, I don't I don't want to be rude. And I like to join their lives, too. <clears throat> sometimes if I'm not busy on Saturday, I may do a live, but then you have to put up with me for like, cause I could sit here for five or eight hours doing this kind of stuff. And, and I like, I snack and eat and stuff while I'm doing that. So you have to put up with that. But I usually will put, if I'm doing a live, I put the event up in my profile and then I will, that way, uh, if I post any videos, you'll see them at the video. We'll be live such and such date. <clears throat> uh, no, I don't take any kind of prepay for a journal. I'm not really. Um, only because I like to let everybody have a fair chance to purchase you know, the journal or whatever. Um, I've thought about putting them on eBay, you know, so that way if people want them, they can go fight over them on there. But I don't know. I just, I, I haven't, I haven't really committed to that yet. You know, because I think eBay kind of, it's like a bloodbath on, <laughs> on there with the, like, bidding wars and stuff like that. And I'm just like, uh, I'd rather just, you know. That's why I, I made a big group of them. So that way I could make an announcement on TikTok when they'll be ready and stuff. And if you follow my page, you can kind of tell when I get to like the end of them and then you'll know that they're going to go on there. But I'll make an announcement like and give a good few days before they're going to actually be put on there. N n no, I don't do um, any more custom orders. I stopped doing custom orders last year because only because it causes me to have a mental block if I do that. Because I have to, the way my brain works, I know this sounds crazy, but the way my brain works 
is if I don't keep creating and creating new things, then I get like, like a, almost like a creator's block, like a writing block, a writer's block. And then I get really like, I actually kind of go through a depression where I'm just like, I'm just so unhappy because I'm having to do the same stuff over and over again, if that makes sense. So I had to stop doing custom orders because of that. And, and orders on ones that I have already sold. Because they'll never ever look the same. Uh, well, I have two here. Um, yeah, that's, a, I feel like I get, like, trapped. And I can't, like, like, I'm like, I'm like in this little prison cell of my mind. And if I don't get to make stuff, like, when I want to, then I, it, like, it really, like, burns me out. Um, I have two, these are the Cosmos, um, Stamperia papers. And I made two of them because they had, I just, I couldn't help myself. Um... So, there's two here. One of these will be, like, you know, really embellished, you know. And then, um, the one will be, like, just, it will have a few things with it. So, yes, it does. It be That's exactly right. It becomes work and not enjoyable and I can't create. That's, a, that's, that's the best way to put it. You know, but yeah, I don't mind doing that like once in a while. And, and I may make books that I have made before, like with the same kind of paper or the same way, but they're always going to be a little bit different. That's why they're all, all of my books are kind of unique because I never make them the same way twice. They'll never be the same way twice. I could even look at a video that I've made and I'll be like, nope, I ain't doing it like that. <clears throat> so yeah oh this one yeah that's very pretty paper yes they do discontinue packs none of these are discontinued but yes they do discontinue packs uh i have a paper pack right now that i really want to make a book out of but I won't open it because it's a discontinued pack you know and and they discontinue um the some of the ephemera packs the ephemera packs that go with the cosmos here it's been discontinued I have one left in my shop and that's it that's it and then it's done what the the paper pack let me see um the one that's discontinued i oh the reason why okay see this stuff is manufactured over in hungary and in the uk in europe and asia and stuff that's where they're located. They need to have a distribution center here in the United States. And I volunteer as tribute to run that because I would love it. Um, I'd be in Stamperia heaven. Um, but whoever was manufacturing their stuff, like, didn't want to do it no more or closed. So it's I, it could be discontinued until they find another manufacturer. I don't really know. Yes, that one is still available, but I don't have it in my... Sh oh, wait a minute. Maybe I do. I don't know. I think it may still be... I may be in my shop. Um, I'd have to... St I'd ha you have to just check and see. And Or if it's not, when I do another order... Because that one's new. That one just came out. That Klimt one. Um, so, that they won't discontinue ones like that. This is the one that's discontinued that I really like. And 
I want them to bring this back because it's got corsets and all kinds of stuff. It's kind of like Marie Antoinette kind of paper. Oh, maybe that's why it's called Princess. I just thought about that. <laughs> maybe that's why. Because And it's really pretty paper and I, I haven't opened it. And it's discontinued. Um, so, yeah. And, and I like, I even have a stamp set. They do make stamps. And they, I have an ephemera pack that goes with it that they don't make anymore. Um, hang on and I'll get, I have the stamps right here because I had them out. Um, they have stamp sets right here. And there's one that they have that goes with that. Let's see. They have the roses. Let me put these over here. They have these ones. And they stick to the acrylic things. They had a Christmas one. Let me find it. And it's got like little corsets on it. And I really liked it. And I'm so glad I got it because um, I don't know if they still have it. But yes, they have all kinds of goodies. Um, they have... Let's see. They have the mixed media stamps, which are big fancy ones. Um, this is like a newspaper one. Come in. Mama. I'm busy. I'm alive. I know. Yeah, Pinky, Pinky joined your live. Who? Pinky, Pinky, my friend. Oh my gosh, get out of here. I don't care about your dumb friend joining my live. Go on. Hi, Pinky. Ugh. My kids just busted in here, giving me a freaking heart attack. Because somebody joined my live. Oh my gosh. One of their friends did. This is the calligraphy one that goes with the calligraphy paper. Don't laugh. It ain't funny. Oh, it's funny. All right. It's not funny. It's pretty funny. Your kids are... Uh, now everybody's saying hi, Pinky. They're what you made them. I uh, know. <laughs> so this is the calligraphy stamps that go with that. Let me see if I can find the princess ones. I know I got them suckers somewhere. But they do have other products like here. They have wooden cutouts. Um, these go with the welcome home things. So, yeah. They have all kinds. I swear. My heart is racing now. I thought something was wrong. I'm like, good grief. What is happening? Uh, oh, here are the Welcome Home stamps. Uh, these are clear stamps. Um, this is what happens when I have too much stuff. Ah, I found them, I found them, I found them. Here we go. I ran out of broom in my stamp box. It's like a big shoe box looking thing. And I've got to get more things to hold them. So I kind of have them sitting everywhere. Here we go. So they have these uh, princess stamps. I'll have to look and see if they still have them. I, I hope so because they're really awesome. And if they do, I'll make sure that they have them. So this is what they look like. They have a little corset and everything. And feather envelope. So, yeah, you know this princess page pad? It, it just dawned on me that it's probably Marie Antoinette I inspired. I, I can't even believe that. I, said, <laughs> I didn't put two and two together. So, yeah. Um, so, those are some of the stamps that they have. I always try to get a mixture of stuff in my shop. Um... And I'll find out, and I'll have, like, a list. That way I'll have it on hand so I know what is still in stock and what is not. Because they keep changing it on me each month. Um, sometimes they'll have stuff in stock, and then sometimes, nope. And so, it's kind of one of those. Yeah, yeah. but your name's not Pinky. It's Pink, Pink A? P 
Peak. There's no N in his name. Peak. I have no idea. Yes, I've heard a lot about you. Are you the one that... None of it good. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Jeremy. <laughs> um, so, I hope that answers you guys' questions on here. But, yes, I have a whole... I have my own hoard of um, paper. Um, I'm also... I guess, while well, you guys will get first dibs here... I'm going to be uh, starting a thing with the people who are subscribed, you know, to um, my TikTok here. And um, what I may do is, and this will probably be only for U.S. only, but I have small paper pads here that I will probably uh, send out to my subscribers not uh sure so don't subscribe yet because i haven't put it on there i may do a patreon instead um but i haven't decided but be on a lookout for those i'll make i always make announcements about stuff like this so uh wait a minute what does this say Um, if you want, if I want to buy Steampunk, can I buy the page pack ephemera and stamps from you? If I have them available in my shop, yes, you can. Um, if there's something in my shop that you're, you want to like, you know, see or anything like that or want to know what I'm getting in, you just send me a message and I can check on all that. Uh, this one is the Cosmos. This is Cosmos Infinity. This one's Rose Perfume. Under here is Sleeping Beauty. That's a little more water that. Um, this one down here is House of Roses. Ella Rose. Pinky said he liked your book. Okay. I Pinky is right here. I can see what he's saying. No, he said it to me. Oh. And then this one is Casa Granada. Um, this one is Artelier de Arts. Um, what was the other one that I did? Uh, then the one that we did tonight is Calligraphy. Does it answer your question? Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that answered it or not, but that's good. All right. But yeah, everything, I just got two shipments in last week on Friday. So whatever's in there now is what I just got in. Because, and you can kind of tell where I'm going with themes. Um, oh, I don't mind. I'd rather, I'd rather people ask questions than I just sit here awkwardly. Um... But uh, you could kind of tell if I add oh, something to the shop, you're waiting. then you're I will, um, okay. if whatever's being added to the shop, as you, most people saw, I added in a lot of Alice in Wonderland stuff. So you can guess what the next set of books are probably going to be after I'm done with this or I'm 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 really impatient person so I will sit here and I'll just make books like we did tonight with this one this is the book I made tonight do you like it I was talking nice. to you I'm not talking oh, to them I'm okay. talking to you nice. um it's calligraphy so that's, that's not me. huh it's not me Jesus Ella Rose I don't know what that means what do you think calligraphy means yeah, pretty much. Um, 
<laughs> Anyways. Then here's Imagine. Oh, I did the Imagine one. Yeah. I like the, the Imagine book has to probably be my favorite one to date. I know I'm surrounded by a bunch of books, but that's the book I think about the most. Yeah, I only use Ella Rose when she's saying something weird. What? Is that what you said? What? Yeah, Ella. I said, geez, Ella Rose. I oh. always call her Ella Rose. It no, just, just rolls off it. the tongue. I don't think it's nice. But it's Actually, nice. that's a little tidbit. All of my girls um, have a flower in their name. Oh, I have an Imagine book that I just completed. Um, if you go to my playlist and it says my books, it will be in there. It says Imagine on the front. That's pinky. I know that's pinky. He keeps, yeah. And, um, but yeah, all of my kids have flowers in their names. Um, let's see, Kaylin, Elise, Ella, Rose, Lily, and Ruby's middle name, since she was our last child that we were ever going to have, her middle name is Meadow. So we have a meadow for all of our flowers. But she does not act like a meadow. She acts like a ruby. A hard gemstone that if you <laughs> threw it at somebody, it would hurt. Because <laughs> she's a tiny little toddler. Seen her I heard, she everybody she heard her. <laughs> they said, "Oh my gosh, it's, it's a, I hear Ruby," and I was like, "Y'all hear that?" <laughs> yeah. So yes, that is what we are working. What I'm going to be working on now. Next, if I do a live on Saturday, I'm not sure if I'm. No, I can't do one on Saturday um, because somebody has to go to the doctor's on Saturday. Yeah, it is on YouTube. Um, actually, you'll see a whole slew of videos on the Imagine book because I was making all the in. I made the book itself on TikTok Live. So if you go on YouTube, it will say uh, the Imagine book or something like that. It will say uh, TikTok Live tutorials. So I made that book on live. Then. Yes, all the Cosmos are available, including the backgrounds of the Cosmos. And you can see all the videos and the inserts and um, everything for the Imagine book. It will be on YouTube. I always, I always post the all. He's asking if you're going to be live on Wednesday. No, I won't be live on Wednesday. I don't want to. Is he interested in journaling? Well, <laughs> he is now. All right. Why well, do you like jo you like bookmaking? Well, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch all of my videos on all the cool stuff hours, that I've made. Hours, no, hours. Seriously, hours seriously, please when I went, do. Because I went downstairs. He went, man. I'm gonna be watching this for a while. <laughs> yeah, I have. I also post all of my TikTok lives on YouTube because I have. A lot of people who are on YouTube but are not on TikTok, so they always want me to put them, you know, on there so they can watch them too. My YouTube channel is Four Girls Stole My Heart LLC, and the link, the button to YouTube is also in my profile here on Your TikTok bio. or on the link tree links. Everything's on there. Including my Etsy store and all that stuff. Well, thank you. I always try to come up with stuff. And sometimes it's not at an appropriate hour. Like this one was at 1 o'clock in the morning. And I'm sure my husband doesn't appreciate it. But I can't help it. If I come up with an idea, I don't write it down. I have to go do it. Um, Stamperia 2008. Jeez, I didn't even know that. I thought they were a new thing. No? Well, they probably are more new here in the United States. Um, but they 
were around in Europe and stuff like that before um, they were ever here. I like that one. Yeah, because they, they're like manufactured. I know, I like it too, and I don't want to open it because it, they don't make it anymore. Um, Dude, you could sell that for so much. No, I'm not selling it. I want to make a book out of it. Go. No. Well, I try to make the journals. I I mean, yeah, I could pack them full of stuff. And it's really hard for me to stop once they get going. So that's usually why I try to make inserts that can come out. And they're not permanently in there. Because some people may want the insert separately or something like that. So I try to make them to where I put I have a little bit of me in it. Well, a lot of me in it. But then you can still put a lot of you in it. If that makes sense. We sit here and do that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Well, no, no, I gotta read it. I gotta read it. <laughs> oh, I can't reach my hand over and do that. Just do it like this. Right there. Um Yeah, I I kind of I've always seen them in passing, the these papers. But I never really, like, paid much attention to them. Until I still, uh, you know, I started really getting into journaling and stuff. I covered up my clock, so I have no idea oh, what time it is. Oh, okay, I see now. I guess I could have looked on there. Yeah. So, I hope that answers you guys' question. If I, uh, when I go live again, what I will probably, um, I, I got one booklet. Are you talking about a paper pad? I don't know. Uh, people call them everything different. I, I, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Uh, they're really addicting to collect. Okay, you don't know. I I actually am glad that all the paper pads and everything for my Etsy shop are in a different room. Because I would be in all that all the time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See, I can't see it because my phone's up there. And I always turn my sound off because if I don't, it will go off all the time while I'm doing live so and it, it's distracting to me so I always put it on silent so that way I can do that but next whenever I'm live again it will probably be on Monday maybe I don't know um it depends on how the week goes but you'll know for sure by Wednesday when I'm going to be live again and probably when I'm going to go live again I'm going to work on inserts for these journals um, because I haven't done inserts during a live really at all because and y'all get to will get to see how my brain actually works because one thing I don't do is I hate measuring stuff so when I'm doing these little pop-ups and stuff I'm winging it and I can I just visually look and say okay I need it about this big and then I start going from there um, and that's like all the inserts that I've done I haven't used my um, Sizzix um, machine in a few months and I don't know I may do some in there because um, I have like a ton of die cuts too um I did have I did have some scoops in there before I went live um, if there's not any in there I will let me see how many uh, went. I only put them in at a few at a time because I want to make sure that the the bowl is really full when I'm doing that and I also have to make sure I keep Ruby out of them 
because I don't know if you heard her when she came in here. She said, scoops, scoops. And I said, no scoops. I have it hidden on the bed. That's where it is. Oh, I see. That's why she didn't know where it was. Because if she gets into it, she has a tendency to take off with stuff. So, uh, oh, well, the next scoops are going to be spring themed. And I kind of have an idea for them, but it's going to take a lot of trust on everybody's part. And that's all I'm going to say. I'll kind of wait. I'll kind of see how it goes. But yes, they're going to be spring themed. Uh, you can go to my Etsy shop, um, my link tree links in my uh, pro under my profile picture. Um, have where my Etsy shop is and stuff like that, and my other affiliate links. I can't do that. My fingers are tired. You slacker. I, I, I figured, I think a lot of people would trust me because, um, well, okay, so the one thing I'm thinking about doing with the scoops is you can't see what the scoop is until it arrives at your doorstep because it's going to be in something and it's going to be a hand-picked, you know, big bag of stuff, but you won't see what it is. So it really will be a mystery scoop. But I can tell you that I already have two drawer fulls of stuff to make the stuff in there. And they're going to be like spring. I can only tell you it's only going to be spring themed. That's it. Yeah, it's like a blind, but it won't come in a bag. It will have a container, and that's all I'm saying for them. Uh, the scoops are twenty five dollars. Oh, good. See, I wasn't sure if anybody would really, like, want to do that. But you guys, and, and, okay, the best part is, is you know that if I hand pick all the stuff, you're not getting a whole bunch of the same stuff, if that makes sense. Um, you can print it out um on well the craft paper that I use the brown paper is like it's in between it's kind of like car, like a medium card stock and it's it's good I don't know how what thickness it's way thicker than computer paper but it's not like as thick as like this stamperia paper it's a little bit more bendy. I was about to ask if you did all those books tonight, and then I was like, "Of course, I did not do all these books tonight. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm not that quick. I'm not like a uh, assembly line. I did that one right there tonight. Not that one. Uh, no, Stamperia doesn't have subscription boxes. They don't sell directly to customers. No. Night. Night, night. But, that's a, actually, that's a good idea. They have, uh, uh, distributors like me who sell their stuff for them. I'll have to check and see if I have any more scoops in stock because before I went live, I did. Um, but I, once I get off of live, I'll check and I'll see. And uh, I'll have, um, I definitely have enough to uh, put them back in stock.
No, it doesn't print out brown. It's it's transparent, so if you have red paper, it's going to print out on red on your paper. So, yeah. Uh, I just put them in Etsy whenever um, they're in stock. Yeah, it's like a transparent background. If that, it, I guess that's what you're asking. And like I said, in the calligraphy book tonight, we did line paper, grid paper, and dotted grid paper. Because that's kind of the theme of the calligraphy pack. They had like lots of grids and stuff like that. And I actually thought of another type of paper that I will probably work on making as a digital. Uh, which, which, I got, I kept watching to see if it came up on your Etsy. What came up on my Etsy? The paper? Or when I do scoops. Oh, the paper? Yeah. If you follow my Etsy store, they uh, you'll get updates about when I add stuff in there. And I added in the dotted grid paper today. The grid paper was uh, already been added in there also. The one with lines is already in there. <clears throat> okay, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's live. Um, if you want to rewatch it again, like I said, it will be on my YouTube channel sometime tomorrow. And, um, and then you can go back and you can watch it and make the book. Or you can watch the other videos to make the book. Um, and look, see, we were all good. We got off of the, the weird Justin, the Bieber fever, uh, train and completed the book so so next live will be on embellishing and making journal inserts so i hope that will be super helpful and then you can see how i come up with ideas and stuff and everything the animal thing yeah and and all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I hope you guys have fun. I hope you learned a lot. Um, no, I don't ship out of the United States. I'm sorry. It would cost you as much as one of my books to receive it. That's why I don't do it. Because it's just astronomical. But thank you guys so so much for joining me tonight i had a lot of fun and you guys have a good rest of your week i'll make an announcement when i'm going to be live again if i don't it will probably be on monday so thank you guys for the likes and all that good stuff <laughs>